Hello and welcome everyone to Cold Hard Witch. We are Lawful Stupid RPG and we're thrilled to have you join us while we play through the Rime of the Frostbade module with some additions sprinkled in on top. My name is Buddy and I'm the DM of this adventure. Not yet, quite yet the trifling DM, but I think we all know that I'll get there. You're actually uh, not a friendly neighborhood. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. um, we are still running a little bit short staffed uh, due to work commitments, but let's see who we have here tonight. Uh, tonight we have Cheo playing Delphina, our Asimar life cleric. Rodney playing Flynn, the Psy Warrior fighter, which is correct this week. And last week I totally boned <laughs> what he was playing. Uh, and Pike playing Professor Reginald, our human warlock. Uh, unfortunately, Fariel and Zalvana's players are unable to join us tonight due to other commitments. When we last left our party, they made a couple of new friends. They met the very inquisitive researcher, Tali, and she asked for their help with a monster who'd been terrorizing the fishermen of Bremen. In a turn of events not quite normal, they actually made friends with the monster and awakened Plesiosaurus named Freddy. Uh, they found a couple of new enemies, a zealous priest of Oriel named Davrick Fane, who operates a shop in the town. While there was no altercation, signs point to a probable future encounter. Uh, and they met a frost druid named Sonora, who they berated, charmed, deceived, and then promptly killed. That's when I knew the party was back. Uh, they heard of a couple of unsavory women who seemed to be looking for them. All they really know about them is that one of them was called Prue, and she had what looked like a green flying snake flitting around her. And most regrettably, they misplaced a couple of party members. After sleeping in from not feeling well, Fariel went looking for the party, but never connected with them. After the women appeared at the inn looking for the group, Xander snuck out to follow them, taking only his coat and sword. Uh, he was seemingly involved in a scuffle outside the inn, and then no trace of him or the attackers. You again have had a good night's rest at the Buried Treasure's Inn, though you feel more accomplished and powerful than when you began the last day. Uh, it is morning, and again, you are waking up. Yawn stretch. <clears throat> Most of us are waking up. True. The professor <laughs> who, who, does, who does not need sleep has been journaling and then just watching everyone else sleep in maybe the creepiest thing in Icewind Dale. I mean, I think, honestly, he's been like sitting on the floor of his room with that staff across his knees, just like pouring over it. Can I identify? Absolutely. I, well, if, if you if you sit with something and contact it for an hour, you automatically identify it, which is a yes. Remember that, friends, that is a rule that no one remembers. And lots of good magic items have been stuffed in backpacks and not used when they could have been. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to basically pour over the staff all night without the identify spell. Man, I should really put that into my ritual book, shouldn't I? Um, but, yeah, and just making notes of everything I come by. Everything that I can decipher on my own. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you... Uh... You, you pour over it and you you discover that um, it's not something you're familiar with. Uh, this is is called the Staff of the Grounded. Um, it is a a magic staff, obviously, that um, can be wielded as a magic quarter staff that gives a plus one bonus to attack and damage. Uh, while holding it, you have plus one bonus to your spell attack rolls. Uh, it also has eight charges, allowing you to cast shield for one charge or Magnify Gravity for two charges. Uh, those charges regenerate uh, daily at dawn on a roll. So, okay. yeah, um, you uh, you actually I have something now, have, Professor. I might not have certain things turned on in my D&D &D Beyond because Shield is showing up on my spell list, castable through the staff, but mm -hmm. not Magnify Gravity. Uh, yes, it's because I I need to uh, buy the wild mount assets and add them yep. into the game, and I'll get that done before next week. Well, I mean, 
okay, we'll talk off cam about okay. what. About what that means. <laughs> okay. I don't want you to have to just buy stuff. So that's that's all right. Um, uh, Delphina, anything this morning for you specifically? Um, she would probably get up and go down and help the uh, help the lady that I completely just forgot her name. Cora. Yeah, Cora. And she'll she'll be helping her clean and sweep and cook. So uh, I gave you time, you guys time to to talk and Delphina gets up and is like. <laughs> uh, Flynn, I mean, anything... anyone who wants to come down and talk to her can. <laughs> Flynn, anything being a... <laughs> specific for you this morning? Um, I'm going to thumb through Xander's book a little bit. Oh, OK. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk at all to the professor and Zalvana about that? Or are you just going to thumb through it and kind of keep it to yourself for the moment? Probably just keep it to myself as I'm like keeping an eye out of the window for either um, of our two party members that haven't come back yet. Okay. Uh, Zalvana wakes is waking just, just like both of you. And she, she sits up and ha has a bit of an uncertain look on her face. Uh, he came to me again. Last night in a dream, uh, I have to go back to the care I immediately for some meeting with the speaker, but uh, I'll be back as soon as I can. And she begins to gather her things and she's getting ready to go down and, and head out the front. All right, just make sure you come back because we are losing people. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I'll, I'll be back. She she kind of pauses and she she looks over her shoulder at you guys. Don't don't promise her anything, but I will see if Cora's son is still there. I don't promise anybody anything. You promise? No. She, uh, <laughs> that was a test. <laughs> and you passed and failed. She uh, she finishes packing her stuff and you guys again begin to smell the delightful aroma of uh, breakfast being prepared downstairs. And you can hear Cora and Delphina just talking and giggling like schoolgirls mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, so unless there's anything else up here, uh, breakfast awaits you. Yep, heading downstairs. <laughs> The professor arrives downstairs. His, his normal black thorn, thorn walking stick is not there, and he's holding this druid staff, which is like up. I, I want to get this right. Yeah, and just like smooth, polished, dark wood. Um, like no adornments on it or anything. Just perfectly smooth staff uh, probably about four and a half five feet high and uh, i don't know that i would say that that was the druid's staff because you guys rolled up on her pretty good and now i would say it is your staff yeah um you get downstairs uh they've they have set the table uh cora says good morning she she seems bright and cheery but you can still sense that um there's still some concern in her face about about your missing friends. Um, the um, the breakfast is laid out. Uh, she says, please, please have a seat, everyone. Breakfast is ready. And I managed to find a little extra butter for Flynn and Delphina. Yeah, thank you. Um, Zalvana uh, comes over to her and says... Uh, uh, Cora, I, I have to take care of some things, but, but, but thank you for, for everything you've done for us. Cora wraps up some bread and some bacon and pours a cup of coffee to go and gives them to Zavanna. Be careful. I, I can't imagine those women will have gone yet. As Zavanna begins to step away, Cora leans in and gives her a big hug. Are you, are you going by yourself? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, yes, I, 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 I have to. Uh, Zavanna moves over to Flynn, kind of quietly, but uh, still enough where the room can hear. Um, please uh, keep Delphi safe. I mean, 
I, yeah, she's already got my shield, so I'll just do what I can. Uh, Zavana moves to you, Delfina. <laughs> and you keep an eye on these two. We, we can't afford to lose anymore. I will do my best. <laughs> Delfina, you, you hear a voice in, in your head. It, it sounds like Zalvana, but maybe when she was a little bit younger. Uh, roll me a perception check, please. Oh, she's perception. Oh, oh, I'm better at that than I thought I was. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's an 18. It kind of sounds like Zalvana when she was younger, or maybe it sounds like a little boy who is sounding like Zalvana. And the voice says, just call me if, if you need me, okay? Oh, well, well of course. Did, did it help you out last time? Yeah. Are, are, are you warm enough? Oh, no, no. It, there, there's you, not, not much that's warm here, but I, I'm so glad I helped you. I, I, I have to go, but, but I still think about you when I look at your feather. Oh, good. Keep it. Um, I'll, I'll try to find a way to bring you more presents. Flynn and the professor, neither of you hear that part of the exchange. All you, you see and hear Delphina having one half of a conversation that doesn't seem to match with anything that Zalvana has said, which has been nothing after she said, keep an eye on these two. Um, Zalvana turns and, and heads to the front door. Um, I'll give you a moment as she is walking. If, if you want to throw a what the hell in there, you don't have to throw a what the hell in there, but. I will give the professor like annoying look and like telepathy. You heard that, right? Yes. Okay. Just, all right. Making um, sure. Is that not, is that not normal? I audibly say, no! <laughs> 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 um... As Zavanna reaches the door, she's going to open it. Uh, the door bursts open and in comes Tali uh, with several baskets uh, and an older woman uh, who is rolling a barrel. Um, she, uh, she goes, oh, oh, uh, hello, Zavanna. She kind of makes her way past and uh, she, uh, sorry, I'm getting some tokens opened up here. She, uh, scary. she, she comes in and she sets the stuff down and it, it seems like the baskets, uh, are laden with, uh, with foodstuffs. Um, and, uh, and, and, and she, maybe some like plates and glasses and silverware and stuff until he says, oh, well, after I heard that things had gotten out of hand in, in the five taverns, but, but there were still drinks there. I thought. I bet Cora could use those supplies for her inns and her guests. So I, I asked Athena uh, to help me, and, and here we are. And Athena says hello to all of you, and she and Tali begin kind of unpacking things and bringing them to Cora, who is, uh, oh, 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 yeah, oh, yes, put, put that right over there. And they kind of begin restocking her pantry. Well, that's really cool. Um, if any of it's haunted, I can bless it for you. <laughs> Tali whips out her journal. Ha haunted? <clears throat> uh, I don't think I've ever heard of haunted food. Uh, please tell, tell me more. Um, Athena and Cora just kind of shake their heads and, uh, and, and continue stocking items. Uh, I feel like Flynn is working on another bread taco. Um, <laughs> But Tilly is wrapped with attention at you, Delfina. Oh, okay. So um, I've only seen this happen once or twice. And this is when I was with my mother and my grandmother. And they were teaching me the cleric stuff. And um, there were these haunted muffins. And this this ghost thing attached itself to a muffin. And it had all these little black ambery things that are going woo up above it. So we had to set it down in a giant circle of salt. And I had to uh, we had to bless it. And then it made the ghost go away. 
Wait, wait. So the wait, wait. Were the muffins going ooh, ooh or the black things on top? Were, were they like currants or or some sort of berry? Uh, I don't remember what kind of muffin it was. I'm sorry, I didn't know that was important. They were just blueberry muffins. Blueberry muffins. That's what they were. They were blueberry muffins. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the F and DM just made an appearance there. There's no L in what he said. He's, he's here in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> that's two. That's two. For, I'm so proud of Pike. I'm so proud of Pike. He's completely self-loathing now. Yep. Uh, it's full journey. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of what it is. You... You guys actually spend a couple of days here and you, you search the town, you ask about, you, you sit with Tali and make some, uh, some sketches of both uh, Xander and Fariel and Cora sits with her and, and makes sketches of the, the two women who had come in and, uh, you guys kind of plaster the town and, uh, and, and really, really case, uh, the joint looking for information. Um, can I have each of you roll, um, 3d12? Three, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Are we totaling these or just... No, uh, just, yeah, just, just the separate numbers. Um. Three twenties. <laughs> No, nobody's okay. No. Yeah, no, no. Well, I was looking at yours. So you did a custom roll of three d twelve. It was a, a nine, yeah. a two, and a nine. A nine, a two, and a nine. I got five, five, and twelve. Three, five, and eleven. All right. If you rolled a duplicate, roll another. So three, five, eleven for Flynn. That is a. So six. I rolled two five. So you want something else? Yeah, nine, two, and six. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So tell me what yours are again, Professor. Uh, if I re-roll a five, then I have a five, eleven, and a twelve. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys. I'm gonna send you guys. Uh, in in asking around about your friends, you have each stumbled upon some. Um, some information, just general rumors and, and stuff. N none of it specifically about your friends. Um, but what I'm going to do is put these in your chats and then you guys can talk about them as you see fit. Uh, talk amongst yourselves while I do some copy pasting here. Also, at some point in these few days, I would like to approach to Lee about my patron. Absolutely. So whenever we have time to to discuss that. Like whenever she's got a free minute. All right, Delfina, I just popped you three different sets of information. Let me grab the ones for Flynn. Um yeah, you actually can uh if you'd like, you can Talk to her now while I'm doing this as a copy paste. Um, first, I would have contacted my patron and see if he's actually open to this idea. Yeah, he um, he he tells you to to see if if she is truly open to learning, and he tells you to teach her a cantrip. And get back to him. Okay. Uh, well then. When, uh... Oh, I almost knocked my cat off the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty. So I, I, I would have done a, a text response to that, but I've got things half-pasted. That's so. fine. Um, Tilly, are you, are you busy? Uh, May I speak with you? I, I, absolutely. See, I couldn't help but notice your your careful consideration and your your love for research and your your copious note taking. 
and I was wondering if you if you might be interested in in meeting what do I call them uh, a, a friend of mine not quite oh, an employer surely but I, I I'm always interested in in meeting friends of friends yes is there if I'm not being too forward is there is there a place where we might speak privately uh sure there you know that there are some empty rooms upstairs that are not currently you guys are the only borders uh in in this inn okay uh so yeah you guys can uh she she knows where the keys are she'll take a key off the ring and uh you guys can head upstairs and and talk a little bit so now you see i i am in contact with a a being, a being of some some significant power. She's writing uh, this, this whole time that you're speaking. Yes, and this this being has a, a thirst for knowledge that must be satiated. Oh, oh! I sounds like I I would like them very much. And that's exactly why you came to my mind, because um, I think that you would be a great help to this being. Uh, and in return, you may find yourself in position of certain gifts that would help in in future research missions she's, or investigations. She's very interested in that. I, I, yes, that this this sounds this sounds fantastic. What what, what do I need to do? Uh, Yes. Well, I'd like to I'd like to make an introduction, but first I would I, I would like to see if you have uh, potential, shall we call it? Um and I will attempt to teach her just like a minor illusion. Okay. So you'll you spend um you spend a couple of hours um we'll say that, that Flan and Delphina are out and, and kind of looking around and showing pictures and looking in under things. You, you spend a couple of hours with that. Um, why don't you roll me an Arcana check, please? Ooh, Ooh natural 19, total of 25. You know, even after just a couple of hours, she she starts to conjure an, an image that looks like Freddy, the awakened plesiosaurus, only, you know, just very small, but 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 obviously an illusion right, right in front of the two of you. And she's beside herself and she's, she's trying to write down, you know, what, what has happened as she starts writing it down, she starts to lose her focus and it, it does start to flicker out a little bit, but you, you absolutely have taught her the minor illusion cantrip. That is fantastic. You show excellent promise. Um, do you care to meet them? Well, uh, yes. Are they are they here in town? Not. No, not not in that sense. No. Um, but I have a way of contacting them at any time, and I will pull out my like just dark leather journal. Okay. Uh, is does your journal adorned with uh with anything? Uh. This one does have a symbol on the front. She immediately begins sketching that symbol into her book. Yeah. I've got a few notebooks. The, the, the one that I note I usually just use throughout the day to make notes is totally plain. But this mm -hmm. one uh, has a, an odd, like, eldritch symbol on the front of it. Um, and I will open it up and just begin writing and i will say this this is to lee and i i think she could be very useful to you and i will just hand the pen and the book to to lee so that she can she can write she looks at you strangely and uh having gone through the process before she seems to 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 read and write several for for several minutes and you know all sorts of i assume you're not trying to read over her shoulder or anything you're just you're letting them 
have a moment. Sure. She, um, you know, she, oh, well, absolutely. And, and she's kind of muttering as she's, as she's writing in it. And, uh, she, she stops and reads what it says and then hands the book back to you. And I'm going to send you uh, a message there. The, the message uh, is, 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 is for you, for Reginald. Okay. I will just carefully... Uh, I'll take my dagger and mm -hmm. like just carefully remove that page. And I will say... Now, I'm not sure this will work, but I, 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 we seem to think that if you place this in a, in a book of your own, a journal, perhaps you seem to have several. Um, well, I, I never leave home without, without at least four. You are going to be marvelous. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh -huh. just, just place this into one of your books and uh, they will attempt to, to establish a connection. Uh, oh, oh, okay. And, and she does, she, she places it in and, and she closes it and she just looks at you. I don't now, know what happens next. That's the exciting part. <laughs> <laughs> she, she carefully, nervously opens the book back up and she goes, <gasps> and you can see from where you sit written on that blank page that you just gave her. It says, hello to Lee. Excellent. Um, as part of this, mm -hmm. I know the ceremony spell. Mm -hmm. Can I do a ceremony of dedication to... Sure. Tell me what that does. Um, let me just send this to the VTT. Um, so dedication is I touch one humanoid who wishes to be dedicated to my God's service for the next 24 hours. It gives her a, a benefit on saving throws, a D4 hmm. on saving throws for 24 hours. Oh, um, but sure. it is it is just a a ritual to fully bring her into this relationship. Yeah, absolutely you can do that. Uh tell me so with what the what the this the ceremony ritual looks like or, or or maybe sounds like. Um is there any kind of pomp and circumstance or is it very subdued. I, I don't think there is. I think it's mostly because uh, the hour that it takes, hour and 10 minutes technically, uh, I think is mostly me guiding her through this journaling process. Like mm -hmm. I, I, like I almost think the introduction is, is worked into the ceremony. There's nothing super formal about it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she, uh, at, at the, you reach the end of it and, and you, and you reach out and you, you touch her on the shoulder mm -hmm. and she, oh, she almost feels kind of innervated from that. Um, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I, I've, I've never had someone as interested in, in, in writing things or learning things or reading the things I've written. This, uh, I, this is going to be, th this is going to be great. Thank you. Now, as I said, this, this being has a, a, a hunger for knowledge. And so you have, you have agreed to help satiate that hunger. So. Oh, what, of course. I, that there, I, I, I can I copy you over, your part. I can copy books that I have written for the last several years. It's, it's he will, he will, he will be full when I am done. Uh, I'm perhaps should have explained this before. I don't know if there is a penalty. Should we, should we fail? I don't know. That's another mystery. I, I don't think that we'll fail. Your, your ceremony has bolstered her to. Uh, is, we're not going to call that a saving throw, but she she definitely thinks that with whatever you're doing, you guys are going to succeed. Cool. 
All right. And then I'll I'll leave. I'll let them do their thing. Yeah. As uh as you leave and you're headed back downstairs, uh one more message appears in your book. Um and when you get downstairs, we'll say that Delphina and Flynn have uh have come back and the all the the different information bits that I sent you guys you can discuss, you can choose not to discuss, you can uh text share them with each other. I just I want to give you guys the option to uh to do or not do. Well um Did the two of you find out anything interesting? Uh, interesting, yes. Uh, got a couple leads on some a job and some smoky shenanigans and possibly overthrowing a uh, movement. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. It's dusty out there in the ice, folks. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> um. By our numbers, uh, in Telemaine, there's talk of a kobold, kobold gang uh, taking over a mine and endangering some miners. Um, uh, and um, we're in Bremen now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's also a frozen pirate ship uh, a little ways from here. That sounds terrifying um and something about an arcane brotherhood plotting to take over the towns that's another piece in this weird game of thrones style power struggle that's going on up here uh what what type of group is that uh arcane brotherhood Flynn, you 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 would have heard of them flynn uh professor i don't think that you would have and delphina i don't think that you would have um you know that the the Arcane Brotherhood is a a loose association of uh, of mages who uh, kind of their goal is is all the magics to, to to get to get power and to and to take over and to be in control of of magic and magic items that they think are worthy and they um they they have gotten up to some shit. Uh, before uh, so, Flynn, I know that you've been here at least a couple of years. Um, how how long have you been in Icewind Dale? Uh, I'd say about like two or three years. So, even at three years, you probably had heard um stories about a group from the Arcane Brotherhood trying to take over the Ten Towns just a few years ago, maybe five or six years ago. Um. And the um, the, the name Valish Gant, uh, you know, he was behind it, and um, he is presumably locked away in prison. But you know, the Arcane Brotherhood is is much larger than just him. Oh, uh, what is that name again? Valish Valish Gant. So like they they like Fay, then Lish, and then. Gant, hard G, small ant. Thalish Gant, and he's in prison. Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> well, I found out some cool stuff too. I mean, we could, we could. There's this, there's this whale that has a boat on its back, so we could go do that. It's supposed to know where where the Frost Maiden lives. That would be tremendously useful, yes. And um, then, uh, oh, oh, there was a magic fish hook. We could go get that. Magic how? Well, it can catch magical fish. Like our, like our friend Freddy. Possibly. I've never used one before, but the lady that had it died, so we could have we'd have to go get it for some uh, from some knolls. Okay. Anything else? 
Um, just some boring stuff about some honey mead and some taverns gonna go dry if they don't get it. Where's that? Are they paying? In 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 good mead. That makes no sense. no mead and good mead, huh? <laughs> There's something about a nine nine foot tall giant and stole a shipment. What's a, a nine foot tall giant? Mm-hmm. Stole a shipment of you should have led with the giant. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm I'm sorry. Okay, let, let's okay, let's try this again. So in Good Mead, there was a nine foot tall giant that particularly stole a shipment of honey honey mead. And if they don't get it back, then there's some taverns and they may go dry. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. But I think the whale would be a lot more helpful. It's got a boat on its back. And if it knows the location of a reel, mm-hmm. is this something that we would need the black sword for? The what? The, the, your, the your organization. The, the cult that we <gasps> accidentally adopted. Oh, the cult we accidentally joined. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And I did. Uh, I didn't join. became the leader of. I didn't join. May- I'm just, maybe I'm just saying they seem to oppose Ariel and all of her work and so if we do have her potential location they might be interested in that not that we couldn't scout it out ahead of time sure. and I could always ask my friend for help too so there's there's always that if we get into trouble D- yep uh huh you're, you're you're helpful helpful friend yes um let's call that plan z sure uh-huh yes <laughs> uh well as for me uh i'm afraid i didn't find anything too uh too telling there's there's some some goblins that have been raiding travelers on in around the mountains and some a group of uh trappers managed to find out where their hideout was up in the mountains um but they haven't been able to find anyone to go take care of them yet uh there's that and the only other thing was uh some wizard in east haven uh they they burnt him which i mean we were just there were we not yeah uh so it was probably the red wizard that we heard of Anyway, um, but apparently one of the adventurers that he had hired and then murdered escaped. Um, And so if there are more red wizards in the area, this uh, this survivor might have a might have knowledge of where they are, what they're up to. But that was all I heard. Okay. Um, let's. Where do we uh, start? Yeah, that's the that's a good question. I'm gonna I'm gonna think really really hard in my head. Psst. Levi, where should we start? You 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 think and you think and you think and there's no response immediately. Um, He's okay. Well, while you guys have been out gathering, um, you kind of look around, and the, there there are people here. Like folks, folks have been coming in and and you know getting some snacks and getting drinks, and getting warmed up. And uh, Cora has not really been able to pay you guys any attention because she has just been busy. The um, the 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 place you guys have just from being here and. And talking to people and stuff seemed to be increasing her business um, relatively wildly from what it looked like when you first got here a couple of days ago. Yeah. So even with all of that, there's no word about Fariel or Xander? Uh, not from not from the stuff that you have found out kind of in, in these couple of days. Um, the um, On the, the evening of your of your second day there 
Uh, like you guys definitely, uh, definitely attract some, some oddities. Um, in walks a, uh, a, a dwarf and everyone kind of stops and it's, oh, I'm like, oh, look, it's, it's the speaker, uh, speaker, speaker, shale scar. Um, you all, he's a, he's a shield dwarf. Uh, he's, he's definitely advanced in age. He's wearing his, uh, his plate armor. Uh, but everyone please make a perception check. Perception. Go. Oh, typical of the professor does not notice this dwarf walk into the room. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, I got an 18. So, so Delphina with an 18, Flynn with a four and the professor with an, I don't know. Um, with, a, with, with an also four. Uh, <laughs> Delphina, he has on his plate armor, but you can see like, like through the, the joints on it and stuff. Uh, he doesn't have anything else on. So he has no base layer of clothes, no, arming padding or anything and he's he's just as happy as can be uh and he's saying hello to everyone and greeting people and someone hands him a drink oh, oh thank you thank you and uh i'll uh i'll walk up to him and sort of lean over um i don't i don't know if you know this or not but i think you forgot your clothes he will look up at you and and look down and because oh, <laughs> I guess that's why it's so damn cold out here, huh? <laughs> you uh, you oh, you are beautiful, my dear. Uh, uh, are are these your friends? And points to the professor and to Flynn. And that's why I never say you go out in the cold like that, or because you never know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> uh huh. I'm just like head down, right at like journal. Uh -huh. Yep. <laughs> you uh. Professor, out of the corner of your eye, you didn't see him walk in, but you see Tali like immediately drawing. Like you can tell she's in sketch mode. I and... like look over and then look up at what she's looking at. Like oh shoot, like that. <laughs> Start sketching. Um, you uh, you must be the adventurers who took care of the sea monster. Yeah, that's us. Uh, I just I I, I cannot. I cannot enough thank you. And he, he kind of reaches uh, into the plate of his armor and pulls out his sack of coins and, uh, and, and begins to kind of fumble out. And, and he ends up uh, pulling out 31 gold and nine silver and just lays it on the table from you. And then he puts that back and he reaches in on the other side and pulls out a scrimshaw goat a carved scrimshaw goat. Uh, you know, he's he's about this big, but this goat has just the most giant penis you've ever seen on a goat. Mm. This has been in my family for years, but... And he looks at Delphina. I want you to carry it with you as a thank you and let everyone know you are heroes. How much, how much cash was that again, buddy? Uh -huh. uh, 31 gold, 9 silver. And a scrimshaw I'll take, goat. I'll, I'll, I'll take the, the, the goat. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, you. You've never even like seen one in real life. And now you've got. <laughs> now I have one in my Got pocket. one in your hand. <laughs> um, Whew. Well, I think that uh, I need to be getting on down the road. I think I might go for a little swim. <laughs> it's really and he cold. turns and kind of clanks clanks out the uh, out of the bar he gets to the front door and wides it open hello Bremen and just kind of daughters off into the night uh, not closing the door someone else has to get up and and close the door for him I didn't see any pouches on that armor is he always like that oh yes he uh this, so the speaker leaves and uh, someone that you've been seeing around a lot, but that you haven't like officially met, um, you know, his name, but um, there's a, a guy uh, who, you know, his name is Jetta. 
he uh yeah he's had to be rescued a couple of times like he uh he went out just just in his his dressing gown one night and was just gonna walk a lap around the lake and it, it 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 took a whole a whole party of people to to find him and get him warm and back back to the the the, the residence he uh He's he's getting a little a little thin up top. Uh, uh, he's, uh, he's a very nice guy, but he he does things like this, unfortunately. What what am I supposed to do with the goat? Uh, you might want to turn that into a necklace, and you can wear it around all the time. <laughs> put it put it, in, in, put it in a pouch. Put it in a pouch. <laughs> I don't have to really wear it as a necklace, do I? No, no, Delphi. Just put it in a pouch. <laughs> <laughs> she starts turning red and almost hyperventilating and puts it into a pouch. <laughs> uh, Pike, please make sure the party loot is up to date that Delphina has the scrimshaw goat with the oversized penis. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I, I, left it, I left it out, assuming <laughs> she would put it on her personal character sheet because... Now it's her problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Delfina, please Great. make sure you giant dick goat. Got it. Uh, update your uh notes. Your notes to reflect that. Um uh yeah, so any uh any other stuff for that? You you actually notice after he he uh talks to you guys that that Cora comes over and says, uh, Jetta, can you can you help me with some stuff? And Jetta politely goes back and and helps her with getting some stuff ready. A few more folks have come in, and uh, it's just it's it's kind of like a nice, nice tavern atmosphere. Um, folks in and out the night are talking to you about um, Xander and about Fariel and the 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 two women and the pictures that you've drawn, and uh, are unfortunately unable to to help, but say that they that they will keep their eyes out, and if they find anything, they will absolutely bring it to you. Um, so unless you, unless you have something else and another night passes, um, this is now the third day that you've been waiting for your friends. Um, it's around lunchtime and, and buried treasures is hopping. Uh, the supplies keep coming in from five taverns. Uh, you notice that her wood pile for the fireplace and for the, the stove is, is full and you notice one of the last few times that you were out, they've actually started taking apart one of the five taverns, um, mm -hmm. if for nothing more than the the source wood, and it's all going in Cora's in Cora's wood rack. Um, but uh, it's about midday. Supplies have been coming in. People are people are there. It's it is hopping. Um, Cora has seemingly hired Jetta, and he's running food to tables and and you know doing cleanup and taking orders. Um, and uh, and a couple of fishermen um, come in and they're they're holding the uh, the sketches uh, that someone had given them of the of the two the two women and uh, they they make their way over to you. Uh, are, are you the ones that are that are looking for for for, for these women? Yeah. Yes. We uh. I feel like maybe we saw them a couple of days ago. Uh, we, we were, we were headed out to headed out to fish and we were getting supplies on the boat and we saw two women uh, marching a couple of bound and hooded people. Uh, the, the prisoners were, were speaking, uh, uh, maybe, maybe in Dwarvish, uh, what, Elvish? Uh, Dwarvish or Elvish. I, I'm not, I'm not really sure. It sounded maybe like a male and a female, but, uh, we couldn't really make out any other details from them, but 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 the women that had the reins certainly looked similar to these two. And you said it was a couple of days ago. Mm hmm. So why haven't you said anything until just now? Because we've been on a boat for a couple of days fishing, and this didn't seem like important information at the time. Well, it's not uncommon for people to be picked up for bounties. Uh, a lot of people here consider laws to be optional. Uh, there have even been a handful of attempted prison breaks in the last hundred years. It, it could have easily been dangerous prisoners. 
Well, but, well, he's right. If they were if they were stuck on a boat, then they wouldn't they wouldn't have known. Don't help them, Delphi. Oh. We can help them a little. Uh, which way was this? Uh, well, like I said, we were about to we were loading supplies, about to put in, and the uh, the boat that they boarded uh, was flying a, a Targos flag. So uh, maybe maybe they were headed back to Targos. Huh. Okay. That might not be a bad thing for us to follow up on. Um. Especially How close just, is Targos? Uh, you know that you can you can walk there from where you are in Bremen in about three or four hours. Okay. Should, should we should we go that way and and see if it's them? I mean, is there anything else going on in Targos? Targos. I'm like flipping through my notes as I scroll through my notes. <laughs> um, if not, I'm everyone thinking... make everyone make a history check for me. History check go. So a six I don't know. and a eleven. Uh crud. That's uh hold on. We're so, Delphina and Professor, you you remember that somebody <laughs> has said something about Targos in the since you've been in Bremen, uh, but you don't really remember who it was or, or maybe exactly what they said. Yeah, Targos was one of the hunting grounds of the Cold Hearted Killer. True. Oh. Uh, Davrick over at Ma Maiden's Wares gets his alchemist fire in Targos, and the Zart and Zentarum have taken over that city. Huh. Who, Flynn, huh. you would also recognize that name as well. Yeah. <sighs> what so, if we do head toward Targos, it's it's not going to be easy to move. It's going around. to be a pain in the ass, is what it's going to be. Yeah. Should we, should we maybe wait for Salvana to come back so it's not just us? I think if she can <laughs> leave from wherever we are, I would assume she can return to wherever we are. Can she not? How or we could work? just sit here and drink for the next few few hours. I mean, days. No, no, no I can't just sit here and drink. I mean, we, I'm we up for it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll throw the rest of this script away, and we'll come up with something new on the spot. We're gonna have a drinking. We're that? gonna have a drinking game involving that scrimshaw goat, though. So, uh, how fast <laughs> can we get to Targus? <laughs> Which direction was that whale you said? It, it was in a Anga Anga Jack Bell place thing. A what? <laughs> Started with an A. N G A J U K. Anga Jukes Bell. Mm hmm. Uh, Is this a place any of us know of or have heard of? You, you, not, none, none of you. And if you ask around by that name, no one, uh, no one seems to know what you're talking about. Well, that might be something that Zalvana would like to be involved in anyway. Um, we could go to how far away is, is Targus and East Haven? Is it like on the way? Well, we just uh, came from East Haven. Well, yeah. So Targos is the next closest city to you. You guys are basically on the west side of the Ten Towns. And to get anywhere else in the Ten Towns, you'll have to go through Targus unless you get on the lake and go up to like Tourmaline or, or Lonely Wood. And then to get anywhere else in 10 downs, you've got to come back down through Targos. Well, I'm thinking 
two things. One, we need some gold for things and stuff. Um, Cause we've been taking a lot of jobs more or less on a discount for a minute here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the, with the whole go, um, we got 30 gold as well. Come on now. There was, there was <laughs> some gold in there. Professor, I eat. <laughs> also, I'm thinking we should probably do something to give Delphi some some combat experience. Um, you know? That might be... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't really want combat experience, so... But you have combat experience, Professor, because you... I just, I just gestured to, like, all of you. <laughs> 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 to most of him, I think is what you really mean. Yeah. I, I mean, my my grandmother was a really, really powerful warrioress. So maybe some combat wouldn't be awful. What did you have in mind, Flynn? A mind full of kobolds might be something up our alley. You know, we get paid. We. Save some miners. Aren't they those cute little lizard things? Yes. Maybe we yeah. could just talk to them. We could talk to them. I I I adopted two. So you adopted two. Where just, are they? Uh, uh, yes, you did. Yeah, it's actually, I, three. Oh, well, three of them in there. <laughs> it was three three kobolds in a trench coat, <laughs> jumping all the way back to like episode three or four, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I got some. We, if we wanted something kind of in our pay grade, there is a uh, a goblin fortune fortress nearby as well. Oof! How nearby? Uh, you know, nearby. <laughs> how nearby is it, buddy? <laughs> you you don't know. That's just that's the 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 nibble that you guys have gotten, and uh, that is currently all you guys know about it. All right. Gotcha. Well, so, it it's there's been rumors that they have found it nearby. We'd have to get more info. Okay, all right, we could scope that out. But do you know where these kobolds are? Uh, yeah, they're uh, they're in a mine uh in term 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 termalane termalane termalane. Where the devil is my map? <laughs> uh, so, you know what I could do? I can. I can I'm help looking you at guys the... for that. I can put you on the a map. It's the map, it's the map. I'll put you guys on the big map page since we're in a bit of a discussion though. This is a huge map, so um I'll have to look for it in the break. I have a map of the ten town somewhere. I think it's this exact map. Oh, yes. now that I see a map, the 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 Anna Anna Jut place said something about the the Sea of Moving Ice. Sea of Moving All Ice. All the way out there. Yeah. Oh way wow. Way out there. Oh yes. okay. That. Well, if there was a whale, that's where it would be. <laughs> <laughs> that's you true. folks don't just come watch us play D anD D. You come for the smarts. <laughs> like if there's a whale, it'd be in the sea. <laughs> But if it knows the location of Oriel, it would make sense that Oriel is somewhere in the Sea of Moving Ice also. That is useful information. I suppose I didn't think of that. I mean, Oriel isn't just sitting in the middle of the Ten Towns waiting for someone to find her. Or is she? Well, I mean, she, she could be. There are Ten Towns. She could be in any one of them. All right. Well... <laughs> And you guys have only been to four of them, so... Yes. Which is, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, well, I'm leaning toward Targos or Termalane. And Targos is on the way, unless we want to go across the water. I mean, do know you'd have to hire a boat for that. So, if if your goal is to make some cash, spending cash to hire a boat might not be the best way to make cash. Uh, I guess the dangerous place, and then we get out of there as fast as possible, and we go to Tourmaline. All right. Yep. Let's 
go to Targos and not get ourselves killed. If our <laughs> friends are in danger, we we owe it to them to to do everything we can, though. Oh, they, Absolutely. They have been nice to me, and all of you have actually been really nice to me. And Flan was giving me stuff and like the shield, so uh, I'll, I'll I, I mean I can. And you have a very nice scrimshaw goat now. <laughs> I'm going to try to forget about that experience that it never <laughs> happened, but so you know, we can do this. Uh, sometime before we head out, I would like to try to, I have a, I found a new spell in Xander's mm -hmm. book that I would like to try um, called Find Familiar. In, in Dazan's book. That's what I meant. <laughs> and um, is it possible to get the components in Bremen? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, you probably can find all of them in in the inn here. Uh, it's okay. It's uh, you know, uh, herbs and incense and charcoal, and then a little right. a little brazier to to burn them in. Um, uh, Cora could between stuff that she already had and stuff that has come from the other uh, locations, she could uh, she could absolutely find find that for you. Okay. Um, and that takes an hour. An hour and ten minutes. An hour and ten minutes. <laughs> as, so that's a ritual. <laughs> uh, so while the professor is working on that ritual, Flynn, Delfino, what would you two like to get up to? Plus, time to get, gather ingredient. Like all morning, professors just running around this inn, like sifting through the fireplace, looking for charcoal, all kinds. Like yeah, stealing it, stealing herbs from the kitchen. I mean, it, it's easy enough to do, but you make it look like it's really an arduous task. Oh yeah, he's frenetic. Yeah. <laughs> um, Delfina would help Cora with whatever she needed, and then when she got some free time, she would head back upstairs to the room. And try to focus on Levi, make sure he's okay. Okay. Yeah, honestly, uh, Cora and Jetta have pretty much everything covered. Um, since Jetta has come into the picture, she seems to be paying the three of you maybe a little less attention and maybe paying him a little more attention. Um, and um, Kind of rude because we were here first, but cool, 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 cool. <laughs> but Fl Flynn's gonna explain you some stuff here in a little while. Make sure the goat's ready. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so you're gonna go upstairs and try to concentrate and contact Levi. Flynn, what do you think you're gonna get into? Um, if everyone else is sort of like off on their own, I'll take a crack at looking into uh Xander's book, especially like the first couple pages, and see if I can figure out what the blade singing thing is all about sure yeah it uh it, it, in some ways it's a little bit greek to you because it is it is kind of from a wizard's perspective uh but you actually see some things in there that you you feel like you may be able to incorporate into some of your own styles to uh to potentially make them better so uh, that's something i'd had a thought on um and so we're gonna say that you're, you'll study that for you know, an hour or so. And then you and I will talk off camera at some point mm -hmm. about some, some augments that, um, that, that blend some of those ideas. Um, Delfina, you, um, you're, you're upstairs and you, you, everything is, you can still hear folks downstairs a little bit. It's, it's, but it's very quiet up here and you sit and, and clear your mind and, and just try to reach out. And what do you say when you try to reach out? <sighs> Uh, are you there? Uh, I just want to make sure that you're okay. Or if you need anything and we're going somewhere really dangerous and I might need your help. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, I'm here. Are you okay? You sound so far away. That's because my mic is pushed out here. Um, okay. <laughs> That makes I, yeah, so I, much sense. I, I, I am. I, I'm, I'm so far away from you, but, but, but it's, but it's okay. You, you and your friend are gonna help me, right? I promised I would. Absolutely. <sighs> okay. I, I promise I, I'll find you. I'm so glad to hear that. I, I have to go. I have to go now, Delphine. We're going. 
We're, go we're going someplace dangerous. I may need your help. We're going to Targos. Okay, be careful. Keep me be safe. Careful. And he, he kind of fades out. Well, I have to find out where he is. I hope he's okay. I wish Elvana were here. I think, I think the professor might get mad at me. Hmm. And I will eventually mosey on back downstairs. I'll put my head around the corner. Why? For what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> um, he's got a bundle of herbs in his hand and some charcoal <laughs> smeared on his face. <laughs> uh i uh i like to think that you have some tucked into your lapel like the the doctor uh who wore yeah. the piece of broccoli uh-huh um yeah so professor your uh your your ritual completes and uh and you look around and and at first you don't you don't see anything and then you uh you hear a tapping at the window. Curious. And I'll go over and like, if it's frosted, like try to like look outside. Sure. Um, you look outside and you see this kind of disgusting, icy winged creature. Um, it was somewhat tiny, but you, uh, you see him outside the window and he's, he's definitely looking at, at you specifically. I'll open the window. <sighs> May thank, I help you? Thank you, master. And oh, he will, you. he will fly. He will fly right on in. Are you the answer to what I... Are you the answer to my prayers? <laughs> yes. What are you? I, uh, I am an, an ice imp master. Ice. My name is Krufial, and I am here to do your bidding. That, that 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 name spell spell it for me one more time. Uh, C R U P H I A L. P H I A L. Crucial. So he should he should now appear in your journal, Professor, and you should have control movement over him. Oh, there it is. Oh, now he's on there twice. <laughs> There's two of them. They're breeding. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and so, uh, Flynn, you uh, you look up from 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 Xander's book, and about the same time, Delfina, you're coming from downstairs, and you see this professor standing there with the window open, and this small little flying creature. Uh, Flynn, normally you would be after a fly swatter uh, for it to deal with something like that, but the professor seems to be having a chat, and he's standing there with the window open, so it's definitely getting colder in the main room, and some folks are looking over there, but no one is... No one seems to really have the guts to uh, to talk shit to the professor. As oh, I approach the really professor, good. <laughs> I'll, I'll close the window. Okay. Um... What the hell? What? Yes. What? I have bound an imp into my service. Uh, he's really pretty. Frightening. A lot, but pretty. Not, um, not as pretty as madam. Oh, and he talks. <laughs> okay. Well, he's nice. Flattery will get you nowhere, Krufiel. Well, that's not... No, it'll, it'll get you anywhere. 
And and so he's like looking. <laughs> he's, he's trying. To, he wants to obey his master, but he's also looking to the two of you. Why am I giving advice to an imp? I mean, I I I I, 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 I don't know. I, I mean, I'm. I think it's pretty safe. I I think he is uh, pretty pretty well bound magically to my service, Kurfiel. Oh. What services do you provide? I don't need to know that. <laughs> I have an excellent scrim, change tire scrimshaw carver. Uh, oh God, I quit. Uh, well, uh, whatever the master requires, I, I endeavor to provide, though not everything may be achieved. So, are you are you good with calligraphy? Are you are you a, a trained investigator? What skills do you have? Uh, he seems to maybe not understand the thrust of your question, uh, and some of that is because I haven't fully kind of dimensioned him yet, uh, That's fine. professor. But uh, he, so uh, what, what I can't tell. Professor was expecting like a secretary of sorts. And so, and so you know, I, 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 I bet you can do with it. I bet you can teach him how to write for sure. And then you can have two journals going. Um, I, I will say that he follows the standard rules of a normal familiar that he is um, a normal familiar would be uh, celestial or fae or fiend. He is fiend and he has been pressed into this imp shape um and so you you may summon and dismiss him uh at will like you would a normal familiar um he is able to talk just because i think that's friggin' hilarious <laughs> um and i i do think there's something else but i it's it's all deep in notes that i i just don't have access to at the moment so we'll okay. we, we will we'll fully dimension him before before the next game okay sounds good um, well, uh, for now, Krufio, uh, when I think of something useful to do with you, I'll let you know. Be gone. And I'll like, snap. He, he will begin to, well, a, a yes, master, as you, uh, and then he's just fucking gone. Oh, that's disturbing. <laughs> Fantastic. I, it was a little, I just want to, I just want to snap again, just to, just to, te just to test it out. Uh, uh. Ah, oh, he's you, back. You called, master. Uh, so yeah, I'm sorry. Just where did you go, by the way? Is that is that comfortable? Does that bring you discomfort if I just kind of like I'll, I'll snap twice or in quick succession and just uh, 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 kind of uh, his brain up or something? Uh, I I do not know where I go, but it is neither comfortable nor uncomfortable. So oh, I hate that. At, at your need... at your pleasure, I I come or I go. Can can he stay with us, Professor? And he'll just look at you with his toothy, kind of like <laughs> drippy imp <laughs> smile. No. I mean, if you want, if you want him around, that's fine. That would be so fun. I'll hold out my arm. Just don't drool on me, please. Yeah, and he'll he'll go over and 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 kind of sit gingerly on your arm. Like he's never he has never done this before. So he's like looking to you to see if it's okay and looking to the professor to see if it's okay. Can I pet him? Professor? I'm sorry, what? Can I pet him? Can I pet him? I don't ask him. Can I pet you? Uh, sh yes. She'll immediately start scratching under his chin. <laughs> as, as you get your hand close, she'll go. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Careful, he is. I mean, he is a devil, so she looks uh, considerably uh, uh, fiend, if you will, sir. Oh, are you not? I am sorry. I I didn't mean to to assume. And I will gingerly. It's a little shaking hand. Reach back to try to scratch under his chin again. Yeah, yeah. He'll 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 let you do that. He was just playing before, like you know, like with a dog. Uh, he he has never had that before, and is 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 appreciating it. He definitely enjoys it. 
that's so cool you have one of these he's so nice he can just stay with us oh do you like cookies uh i have never had one so <gasps> i immediately you, go to the, to the bar uh, uh, no not not normally no <laughs> just, just you. we'll find out <laughs> take good notes <laughs> So you you scrounge up some cookies to to yes. try to he he doesn't really know what to do so like like you 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 do the motion and kind of show him and he puts one in his mouth and bites it and just like the pieces just all fall out and he's just crunching pieces and they're falling. You gotta sw- swallow it, like. And so after a few minutes, uh, you know what I'm gonna say that for a few minutes you're teaching him that Flynn, please give me your. Uh, your thoughts on what the actual fuck is happening here. I saw a dinosaur talk to me, and this is still the weirdest shit I've seen all week. Um, I, 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 mean, I, I do want to say that technically within the last week, you have seen Herrick sucked into a portal, Delphina pulled out of a portal, and the professor's arm go missing in a portal. Just want to point that yeah, out. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> like por- portals is like part of the job description something about the, the imp eating is going cookie monster over there i i the imp showing up delphi immediately bonding on to it and now it's just in the corner eating cookies like a muppet i mean if i'm not, not mistaken i believe it is the same kind of relationship that that xander had with his his owl his owl didn't talk to us I, true she's also Faye. yeah but i mean xander spoke to the owl did he not yeah yeah they can telepathically speak he would often do it out loud but you know that they can telepathically speak i do, i fail to see the difference flynn i it's he's a as a that is a tiny person with wings on Delphi's arm, shoving macaroons down his throat. It, Delphi, Does he's it actually have a tiny pitchfork or like a <laughs> tail. It, 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 it does not have a tiny pitchfork. Uh, roll a roll a d6. Evens. He has a, a spike tail. Odds. He does not. He's got to for stability when he flies. Well, he has uh, a that's tail. A, that's a four. So, so that's yeah, even. So yeah. So his his tail has tail. has like a little spike on the end, uh, like a, a like an like an, ar- like an arrowhead kind of thing. Otherwise, it would have just been a smooth tail, Flynn. So okay, um, I because all of our weird shit has been big scale. Got me right, and mm-hmm. this is very small and on Delphi's arm right now. And mm-hmm. and after the, during all of this, I can Delphi, make him not be on Delphi's arm if that would be no, he's, no, he's, leave him. He, he's definitely getting the hang of it, and is like kind of experiencing taste and and. Oh, yeah. is, is this good? Mm-hmm. These are really good. They're not as good as my mother's, but they are very good. Yes, yes, they are not as good, but they are good. Yes. So this is a good taste. Yes. What is a bad taste? Just for my frame of reference. Um, like things that are 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 burnt, uh, o- overcooked, or 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 just really really burnt. Um, you, you look and next to you, Jetta has like the whole crowd is just silently watching this take place. <laughs> Jetta has worked up a little bit of strength and he comes over and he has a little piece of charcoal and a little like cup of vinegar and he just <gasps> hands them to you. Thank you. Okay, so here, here, try this one. This one is charcoal. So this one tastes like this is a bad taste. Is this is this just not a cookie? No, it's 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 charcoal. You and he like and he, and he samples the the cookie and samples the charcoal. I I don't really see any difference. And Flynn, when he says that, you know exactly this is the professor's familiar. <laughs> oh, try try the vinegar. That's a bad taste. And so he takes it's it. It's very strong. And he he pours it and and tries to chew. And so now there's just fucking vinegar all down his front, and there's oh, vinegar oh, now oh, on your drink. arm. Oh. Uh, this is this is much easier to eat, yes, but but this no, is cookie, you, liquid cookie. It, no, this is vinegar. You 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 don't you you're not supposed to drink it, but you drink it. He will look back, Professor, at you. 
take it. You do you want to do you want to go? Are you done? Uh, he he <laughs> will he will he will attempt to like follow your orders, but then just like bites the the <laughs> the edge of the glass off. Curfew, and so now and now yourself. he's crunching the glass. Ah uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, this is this this is this is good. This is bad. This is this is bad. Does uh, it hurt? Ah, uh, bleeding, and I'll yes, like, open his mouth yeah. and try to look in. Are you uh, sure you're okay? Uh, yeah, no, I'm uh, not sure uh, if he has uh, blood. Dude. Uh, 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 he doesn't have blood, but he definitely feels the pain of the glass. Okay, in his I'll mouth. spit it out. I'm gonna cast cure wounds. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It, uh... <laughs> is he is he entirely crystalline? Like, can you see through him? Like, uh, no, no, no. Ice? Okay. No, he seems solid. Um, but, but they definitely has kind of the icy sheen to him. Um, and since you haven't really been outside with him, I mean, maybe something will be different, like in the icy, it, cause it's quite warm in here. So, yeah. Um, Krufio, do you have the ability to dismiss yourself? Mm, no, like, that's, that right is reserved for you, master. Could I give you permission to dismiss yourself? Uh, you Krufio, can, I com- you I can, can give you me, yourself. you can give me permission, but it does not work. <laughs> and Flynn, now you hear him being pedantic back to his owner, you're like, that's definitely the professor's familiar. Uh, it's two of them now. <laughs> <laughs> this one's so much cuter. Hey. You all, you almost see like his bluish skin like blush just a little bit when you say that. Even though he has no blood. Crucio, <laughs> do you do you require nourishment of any kind? Mm, no, no, master, I do not. Yeah, Delphi, I don't I don't think we should try to feed him more. That might do more harm than good. Oh. Well, I, I'm sorry. I didn't want to hurt you. I just No, I very I, much I, appreciate I, like, the gestures. Crufio, she was trying to do something nice for you. So I don't know oh, if it, it means anything to you, but it it yes, Master's friends are very nice. Mm-hmm. Which, which which is good. Which is yeah. bad. Which which no, is good. No, it's good. It's good. good. <gasps> you sure. can sleep at the foot of my bed if you ever wanted to. So, so if the professor annoys you, you can come sleep on my bed. I need a drink. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you, dude, dude, you, you, Flynn, you look, and and Jetta is about to go out of the bottle, and then like pours you some off. <laughs> well, why do I cause people to drink? That happens a lot when I'm around. I don't understand. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, none of you know now that she has fed him cookies how. Uh, familiars poop either so you know this could be a thing yeah <laughs> this is gonna be interesting that pocket Wally's still on my arm all right party of mine are we gonna are we gonna play the 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 Crufiel, uh Delphina and Crufiel show. Oh my gosh. It's like the sister <laughs> show. So it's, it's Flynn and the professor buddy cops. And then it's Delphina and Crufiel, like Saturday morning cartoon, uh, Saturday morning <laughs> yeah. cartoon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So are you guys uh, going to head out? Well, that are was, you, that was you my morning. So hiring uh, a boat. What are you doing? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm free to travel. If, if we need to get out of here, I think we really do need to, to follow up on these leads. Yeah, so uh, let's head towards uh, Targos and probably check and see how much it is to charter a boat to um, Tremolane on our way out of here. Okay. Okay. Um, Cora comes over and she has she has packed food. Um, for all of you and has refilled your water skins. I, um, I, I cannot thank you enough for all that you've done for me. And, and she gestures around and, and, and for my inn and, and even for the entire town, I, I want you all to be very careful and know that you always have a place to stay in Bremen. And if the others show up, I will, I will care for them and I will tell them, uh, where you've gone? Is anything else that, that you would like me to to, to, to let them know? Um, we tell her. Maybe she can tell her where we went when they come back, and they can try to catch up. 
Absolutely. I just didn't know if there was an, another message. Like the about how the professor has a really cool pet. No, no, let's take, let no, let's let them. Delphi, take take a D twenty inspiration. Ruin, you just yeah, read. You just read my mind. D twenty so, inspiration. <laughs> um. Uh. A, 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 absolutely. Thank. Thank oh, you. Oh, tell. Thank tell you Xander so I got his book. If Xander comes by, tell him I got his book. Of course. Yeah, we got course. all this stuff. Of course. Um. Yeah, and so she will. You you guys grab your all your stuff from upstairs. And your packed lunch and your water skins and does she the, have like actual trail rations that we could purchase? Not that you can purchase, but she will absolutely uh, give you guys kind of the equivalent of a couple of days of rations each. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, you guys realize that you you've not there's there's not been any money exchanged for anything. Um, Is that weird? Well, it normally is, but you also look around and realize what you have reinvigorated, not only her business, but you think about how she was when you first got there. She was just sitting and waiting and not doing anything. And you've you've kind of reinvigorated her as well. So as I, I mean, she has definitely profited of us being <laughs> in town. Absolutely. So. And I think that's why you guys have not seen a bill. OK, that um, makes sense. And as you. um as you you all head to the door and and open and look back, she's standing there and she's just you know a little bit of tear in her eye, and then Jetta walks up and he waves and then slowly puts his arm around her, and then you guys are out in the town. Um, anything else that you want to do in Bremen? Is um, the uh, the dwarf fisherman drunk still? Is he the one that we would uh, charter a boat from anyway? I uh, you I mean you could see <clears throat> if if he did. So you guys are all the way down in the south of the map at Buried Treasures, and um, he would be up kind of in the the north near the docks. Um, or we could just call Freddie for free. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I'm. Sh I'm sure that Freddie just wants to take you guys around uh, all of Merid Walden. So and I shut don't up. Think we buddy. have a way to contact him. <laughs> oh, I just stick my head in the water and scream. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you had to cast like speak with animals before mm -hmm. you did that. Uh, yeah, but um, I want to watch that happen so much. Yeah, so you can. Uh, do you guys want to head over to the docks and see if you can find Grinsk? So, are we going to Tourmaline or are we going to Targus? I think we're going to Targus. Targus. I just want to see how much mm -hmm. the, the the boat's going to be. Okay. Because especially if, hold on, let me look at the map again. Ah, never mind. I was say, say if we get to Targus, we like make a beeline to the water. But it looks like it's like. Same distance, going to, straight to the lake, then coming back here and get, getting getting and getting a boat. Yeah, I mean, by the time it would take to to hire a boat and navigate the ice on the water and stuff like that, it's it's going to be the same or a little bit longer time to go to Tourmaline on the water as it would to go there via Targos. Okay. And as stated before, you the last lead that you have on your friends is in Targos. Is in Targos. Uh, all right. So, are we gonna head to? Is that where we're headed to Targos? Yeah. Away yes. we go. Um. Uh, alrighty. So, we'll get you guys. Uh, you travel for. You have to travel south just a little bit. Um, the down kind of along the river, and then cross the river, and then back up to to Targos. Um, the path is not super well maintained anymore. So sometimes snow obscures the road a little bit, but I mean, just with a little bit of kind of poking around, you can, uh, you can figure out where it, where it should be. Um, you follow the, the river Southwest for about an hour. And, um, then you roll up on, 
a river crossing, a uh, a bridge, and so let me drag you guys onto the map here. Uh, don't worry about the fact that there's a battle map on there. There's that's mm -hmm. never never a bad sign. Right. In the least. The fact um, that you just have a random picture of a bridge over a river is concerning. So what I will say is that just a at, normal normal bridge. At, as you guys draw closer, the wind has been increasing kind of dramatically. You you hear the sounds of cracking ice and, and even liquid water. Um you see this bridge and as you approach it you get closer. You notice that much like the path you've been on, it is not in the best of shape. It, um, you can see it sway in the wind and, and, and maybe even ripple a little bit, even though it's not a rope bridge. It's supposed to be a, a, a solid, hard wooden bridge. Uh, seems like maybe it's 40, 50 feet above the Shangarn River. Um, as you get close kind of to the range that you're in now, you, you hear the sound of, of creaking and popping would add itself to the cacophony of the wind and the ice and the liquid water below. And that's where we're going to take a five minute break and let these guys oh. think about Oof. this river crossing. Um, random river. Random no river. Problems. So I just went I, ahead and threw Krupiel's thing right over there by Delphi. Yep. You know how, I know how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I would love it. Oh, that's what I freaking if, thought. If everyone uh -huh. could roll initiative. Uh huh. So uh, Krufiel goes on your initiative, uh, Professor. He can either go yes. before or after you. It is your choice. Well, I should do initiative on the thing. No, don't do it on the thing. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, There's a 10. You know, you uh, say you okay. say that, but tonight when I was getting my dice out, I I, I threw the two twenties I normally use. I threw them, and the first thing up was double ones. I was like, "All right, this is gonna be good for the party and bad for me." I definitely clicked my token and then rolled it. Why did it not go to the track? That's all right. I can I can add a turn. Do yeah. There I showed up. But it was a four thirteen, right? Yes. Yes, I got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, so first up in the order is Delphina. So Delphina, why don't you tell me uh, tell me what you're thinking here? I cast Divine Smite on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's real great for the person that can fly across, but the rest of us don't <laughs> you, uh, have to cross this thing. You know what? It, it hits because it's a bridge. Uh Please roll the damage. I'm not. I don't even okay. have divine smite. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 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 <laughs> I, was, I was trolling you. Get it? Oh. Troll. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Yes. Del Delphina thinks that there's a troll under the bridge that she's going to tame as another pet to go along with the professor's pet. Uh. I like the prof the servant. idea that the professor's like, "This is not a pet. This is a tool." Exactly. <laughs> It's a pet. It's not, not a companion, not a friend. So Delphi doesn't think anything sus about this bridge. Chael does, but <laughs> Delphi doesn't. So she's just going to walk up to the bridge. I don't see anything bad, do I? Do I hear anything, smell anything, get any bad vibes? Uh, well, I mean, you, the, the bad vibe you get is that, as I said before the break, the the bridge moves like it's a rope bridge. And it really shouldn't because it's a solid wood, solid wood bridge. It's uh, a fucking mimic. I'm going to, no, we need to fly over the bridge. Dude, if, if I did not even bridge, consider that. And oh, I wish, buddy. oh, <laughs> I'm, slipping. I'm, <laughs> slipping. <a> <laughs> I'm slipping. I'm slipping. I'm so slipping, y'all. That would have been amazing. Uh, it is not a mimic. But as I said, it, it, it kind of. As the wind blows it, you can see it doing what you don't feel like a wooden bridge should be doing. But again, the path the path has been ill in ill repair and not like shoveled or anything. So I am going to take 
Am I ever going to need a crowbar? You never know. <laughs> you never know. I have used one in a in a campaign before, so. I'm going to take a piece of chalk out of my inventory and I'm going to throw it onto the bridge and see if anything happens. Okay. Where uh, ping out where you think you want to throw it to. Uh, somewhere over here. Uh, yeah, we'll say that you could. That shouldn't be. We'll say that you far. could throw a piece of chalk 40 feet. <laughs> I believe in you. Uh, yeah. So you actually, uh, you have to kind of throw it into the wind a little bit to make it curve and, and, uh, and hit the bridge. It's like that movie with the assassins that curve the bullet. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it, it, it lands and it, it, it rolls and kind of gets stuck in a, 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 a crack of, of wood, but it, the, the bridge seems to be holding from something that weighs less than one half of an ounce. Presser just looks at Delphi like, why the hell would you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's safe. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a, a mimic or something. Oh god. Chalk mimic. Uh, I guess I will oh. Oh, I'm scared, guys. It's I a have, bridge. I have an AC of of eighteen. Okay. I, I'm I'm going on the bridge. Okay. Oh my lord. Um roll me a D6. Oh fuck. That's a five. So, I mean, it, it, it creaks a little, but that first step feels pretty solid under your foot. That's all I'm doing for my turn. Okay. Flynn. All right. Okay, everybody. Um, I'm going to come up to the edge of the bridge here. Hold on. I'm caught under the turn order. Hmm? Uh, I gotta, I'm trying to move my token, but it's caught under the, tur the turn order. You can move the turn order. I know, I'm doing that now. Okay. Okay, there I am. All right, so um, I will. Ah, God damn it. Um, <laughs> Santa there at the edge of the bridge, looking at Delphi, looking at this bridge. It's like, well, all right, light feet, light feet, light feet, light feet. I'm going to um, run out a bit. Ooh, please tell me you're going to Naruto run, like Naruto dash across the bridge. A little bit. Arms back and everything. Go. <laughs> uh, all right. Run run on out there. Okay. <laughs> and roll me that D6, please. Yep. That's a five. <laughs> So similarly, the uh, it 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 creaks, but the 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 boards seem to hold under your feet. Okay, um, Professor, come on out, and then I'll try and catch you if <laughs> you fall. What do you mean? Just a guy without wings. What do you, where else would I go? I would don't be an ass. Just come on. <laughs> you two are acting so weird. It's okay. The professor hasn't noticed the initiative tracker up. It's fine. <laughs> uh, okay. So you're How gonna speed this proof y'all have. Uh, he's thirty feet. Sorry. At least for tonight, he's thirty feet. Um, yeah. So that you're just gonna take the. The move action, you're not going to dash or anything? No. Okay, I'm just so walking. D6, please. Three. The uh, There's definitely kind of a crack and pop, and your foot doesn't go through, but it it is definitely soft right there, and you feel like if you had if you had stepped a little harder, that, you know, you might be digging some splinters out of your ankle. Um, soft is in, like, the wood is rotting yeah yeah or, or maybe just the uh the nails had had rusted through but when you stepped it it gives a little but it does not punch through i think man like soft as in like squishy no like, no not that like not weird. not like flesh or pudding or anything black pudding bridge uh anything else professor nope delphi 
Okay. I'm... This is where we play. How many rounds of terror can the DM squeeze out? I'm, I'm going to dash. How far can I go when I dash? You can do twice your movement. So you move 30, I think, so you can move 60. Okay. I'm going to run. I don't want to die. All right. So give me the D6, okay. and and then we'll talk about what's next. Oh, fuck. <laughs> For the record, she does scream as she runs. <laughs> That's a three. I don't think you moved your full... That's only 50 feet. You can go 10 more if you like. I don't really want to, but okay. Here we you, go. Don't have, you don't have to. It's it's a. Everything you do concerns me, so it's, is, it's fine. I'm paranoid no matter what. This is, this is Still not convinced it's not a mimic. This is y'all's stream, man. Uh, yeah, so with the three, uh, just like the, the professor, the, the, the wood gives a little, but it doesn't punch through. But I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw because... It's the middle of the bridge where it's moving the most. And I need to see. 18. Eat it, bridge. Very, very nice. So the the bridge whips to the side and you you quickly get your feet under you and just kind of ride the ride the wave out with it and look back at the other two. Be careful. Anything else on your turn? Uh nope. As far as I can go. All right, Flynn. I will. I'll do. I'll do the, the dash as well. So let's see. It's sixty feet. It's gonna put me there. Okay. So give me that D six, please. Uh huh. You find what may be the, the sturdiest part of the bridge. Um, for running through the center, though, I also need you to make a deck save. But that should be easy because you're a deck build, right? Yep. Every time I say that, it bites me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> 18. Kind of like that seven. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> so you you make it your 60 feet because you rolled the, on that, that six earlier. But... Uh, you are definitely on your ass when you get there because the as the, when she kind of juked when it did the thing, you did not. And so it it whipped out and you managed to keep your speed going forward. But you uh, <clears throat> you're you're sitting on your butt at the moment. Uh, it does. It looked a little cool, but not super cool. The last 10 feet, I wasn't even on contact with the bridge. It was like feet in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for you, sir? No, I'm good. <laughs> Professor. Walking my... <laughs> walking my 30 feet. I don't know why everybody else is running. Uh, yeah. All right, D6 I... and a deck save, please. And a deck save? I haven't done anything yet. No, but the, the bridge is moving. You're at the height of its movement. I got another three. Uh, D6. I, again, just like before, the, the, the wood, it almost gives, but it uh, since you weren't running... Probably not as bad as it could have been, but but yeah, it's it's definitely kind of soft right there. Uh, deck save fifteen. Uh, you manage to stay up. It it's it kind of takes all that you have, but with your with your new staff, you manage to kind of dig that in and and steady yourself a little bit. Uh, right. so you are still up. Anything else for you? I think that's it. The thing that I want to do. Mm hmm. Is a it's, fi it's fireball. No, it, I, I can telekinetic shove as a bonus action, but you can't ready bonus actions, can you? So No, unfortunately not. That's fine. Uh, all right, yeah. Delphi. We're in the home stretch. Oh, okay. How far uh, how, how far you got to glory? Let's see. It's 40 feet and you're off this. So one more dash and you can get off the bridge. Yeah, but uh, now I see tire tracks and they concern me. I'm like, this now, is too easy. Th those are, gonna... are you talking about these? Yes. Those, no, those aren't tire tracks. Those are, those... those are dragon tail tracks or some shit. I'm scared. <laughs> well, yes, maybe they're dragon tail tracks, but they're not tires. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna dash. I'm gonna you know dash. what? 
I'll uh, I'll give you advantage on your next roll if you rub that scrimshaw goat. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna do it. You give me my damn roll. I'm gonna take it out of my pocket. And I'm gonna rub it for good luck. Oh, Flynn, this is so disgusting. Flynn, you see that from where you are. We'll come back to it. Um, yeah, <laughs> give me that. Give me that d6. That d6 roll with advantage. And it's a six. Okay, and you give me your deck save with an advantage. Okay. We're going from the swinging bridge to the hard ground. Okay, it's an eleven, and then a ten. <laughs> um, we're just, the snow's a little bit deeper when you get off on that side than it had been on the other side. So you you make it off the bridge just fine, but you uh, you do end up kind of sprawled out on the ground holding the scrimshaw <laughs> goat. Um, and not by its feet. And not by its feet oh, either. that's what I was afraid <laughs> of. So, so Flynn, she, she hits the ground and you look out and she has it. And she's like, ah! <laughs> Can't be enjoyable for the goat. And, uh, well, you know, not so bad. Uh, Flynn, <laughs> you'll have to use uh, half your movement to stand up. <laughs> yep, standing up. <laughs> Quick shout out to uh, Hard Knock Dice for the raid. Bring yes, us, uh, thank you. Group of nine for us. <laughs> thank you so much. You you got here just in time for us to be dirty for no reason. <laughs> and, uh, I, and I have a scrimshaw goat with a special surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's large enough that it's not really a surprise. It's just out there for all to see. Well, but she pulls it out <laughs> and holds onto it like a handle. <laughs> uh, that was falling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Save cheeks are getting magic goat. Ooh, my <laughs> cheeks are getting warm. Uh, all right, Flynn, are you gonna are you gonna dash off? Because you'll need that more than uh, more than yeah. you move. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. So just give me that that d six and a, and a, a deck save. Deck save with advantage. And there's the d six. Okay. Nice. You find another good good kind of solid purchase of wood. Hmm. Oh, dude, you uh, it, it, you have not seen anything like it, Delfina. Like you, you take your eyes off the goat just enough to see Flynn, smooth roll like off the bridge, standing next to you. You know, I'm even gonna say that that you end up right next to her because that's how smooth your dismount was. You ex you slid on the snow just a little bit, and you have your hand out to help her up. Uh, it was pretty <laughs> freaking impressive. Nice. Well, um, unfortunately, the hand I give you is the one with the goat still in it. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> Professor, I hope you, anyway. you, uh, you can't see the nastiness that's happening up there, but trust <laughs> trust me, it is. I'm just walking my next 30 feet. Uh, all right, a d6 and a deck save, please. D6 is another three. Oh, deck save. <laughs> it's a total of four. <laughs> Uh, uh, Flynn, watching I Flynn. Think I have anything for that? Nope. Watching <laughs> Flynn master masterfully dismount. You think I could do that and try to get a little a little cute and uh, as well end up end up on your on your ass and uh, crew feel is uh, uh, master is this is, is this the wisest choice to 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 sit down on the moving bridge uh, I just wanted to catch catch my breath ah, ah very good very good yep um please sit Delph? down with me please. <laughs> and, he, and he he will he will descend and and sit next to you, Thank you. uh Delfina I am going to pull myself the rest of the way up. Thank you, Flynn. You're welcome. Um, do, you, do you restore your goat? Restore it, put it back in your in your stuff. Okay, I'm gonna need you to use a different type of wording for this goat. I put the goat back back in its pocket. Yes. You shove I, you shove I you shove the goat in the pocket. Oh. I resheathed re the goat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you punch your microphone? <laughs> if 
funny. I hate you so much. This is your fault. Oh, it's oh. it's absolutely my fault, but I love all of you dearly. Oh my god. So with my mm. newly wreath cheesed goat, I will uh are you guys coming? <laughs> They're not the only ones. Uh anything else with your turn? Anything else with your turn, Delphina? I think we're just gonna stand here and wait for him. <laughs> Flynn, <laughs> you just observed all of that, like right next door to it. Uh, I'm gonna ignore it for now and just look out at the professor. And if you need me to, to pull you over, just let me know. What are you two in such a hurry for? Uh, professor, you have to spend half your movement to stand up. Oh, crud. All right, I'll stand, and then I can only get 15 feet. Or you could dash. Uh, we can mm -hmm. get off of this map. All right, I'll dash the last little bit. All right, D6 and a deck save with advantage. Another three. You got the lock on that, that D6 with the threes, man. Yeah, I'll keep that one for a bit. Uh, deck save with advantage mm -hmm. is a 14. Yeah, you... Uh... You, you follow in, in Flynn's tracks, and uh, it's not quite as cool as his, but uh, but it's pretty cool. And yeah, you guys... Rufio, you can you can set up and follow me now. Uh, yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you, Master. Yep, yep. yep. And he will dash as well. Um, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Chael, is your mic okay? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Rodney, are your headphones okay? Yeah, uh-huh. Did you get... <laughs> You did one of those, and they just uh, went straight down. They're gaming headphones. They are used to it. Yeah. <laughs> they, Mike they, didn't go anywhere. They, just don't tell Jade. They've seen They've seen some shit. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so you guys uh, you guys continue moving uh, uh, away from the bridge. The turn order closes. And that was you unnecessarily move. cruel. Um, you move on down the uh, on down the road. You get, um, I don't know, maybe another hour down the road and just off to the side, um, you see a little, um, uh, some, some stones that are, that are, uh, sharply cut and, and, and erected in the snow. They stand about seven feet high in the middle. There's a, a cut marble dais. And um, sitting on the top of the dais is a white marble bowl. About it's about three feet in diameter. I would like to get a closer look. Uh, okay, okay. You should have freedom of movement. Okay. Uh, take Krufiel with me. Okay. Uh, just take a real close look at this thing. See if I can do, identify yeah, so, so you any can, markings or anything like that. So these are steps. So it's one, two, three steps up. So you can actually get kind of all the way to here, to to this ring. That I, I realize you can't see my mouse moving, but you could get all the way to there. Yeah. Um, um, I'm going like, to uh, get down almost and like crawl on all fours so that by the time I get to the top, I'm like laying down and just like, poking my face at this the the circle here and just getting real close to it uh well i will say that especially with your ab abusively high investigation um as you walk in you notice that the the stones are um they're covered with stains of what look like frozen blood um there seem to be several fish hooks uh embedded into the stones as well fish hooks. um Delphi, didn't you mention something about a fish hook of some sort? Yeah, there there was a mass a magic fish hook that caught magic fish. It, some some people took it away from this lady. As I scroll back up the, to see what her name was. Do you have the ability to detect magic? Do I have? I I do. I can do that. I'll say I could as well, but it would take me some time. If you would prefer to save your spell powers. Um. <clears throat> Thanks for the sub, Vermillion Hydra. 
Appreciate that. I I can do I can do the detect magic. I could try. Uh, why don't you uh, take a look around with detect magic while I see if I can figure out what this is. I shall do that. Detect right, Flynn, magic at the first level. What are you getting into, Flynn? Um, I am just keeping an eye on them and the road because I can't detect magic. So, yeah, the uh, it is very lightly snowing, but um, you don't see anyone coming from where you were or or where you're going to. It it seems pretty pretty desolate, like much of the space here in Icewind Dale. Uh, yeah, so you cast Detect Magic. So, uh, beyond the things that are pinging from you and your companions, the various bits and bobs and trinkets and armors and weapons and things, um, the only thing immediately that you notice here that is giving off uh, any sort of magical glow is coming from the inside of the, the, the bowl on top of the dais. On I'm, the dais, on the dais. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to approach the bowl, but I am not going to touch it. I just want to peer over and see what's inside it. Okay. Um, inside the bowl, uh, it looks like the, there's liquid water with a, a thin layer of ice on top. And the, the water and the ice are clear and you can see straight down through. And it seems like there are coins and kind of other small valuables or trinkets um, it, it, on the bottom of the bowl in the water. It looks like some sort of offering bowl, maybe. There's, there are coins and things in here. Uh, these symbols around the bowl, do they offer any indication like what the, the purpose is or anything like that? Um, I would say that the the symbols on the bowl don't really kind of tell you much, but you, uh, is Krufiel Krufi still out? No yeah, way! He's here. He, uh, he just started a hype train, which is bonkers. <laughs> oh, Krufiel, that is so nice of you. <laughs> um, he, uh... Useful already. <laughs> he... Uh, Master, maybe maybe something with the outer stones. And, and, and as he says that, you you look at the stones and you realize the, the kind of the pattern is a little bit familiar. And I will let you roll a a history check uh, if you like. Like a snowflake. Or you don't need to roll a history check. <laughs> I need a history check to know what a snowflake looks like. Uh, history is eighteen. Yeah. No. The um, they look like a snowflake, and in fact, it looks like the six pointed snowflake that you have very recently seen on some necklaces that you got in Bremen. Okay. Um, See, so yeah, I look at Delphi. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that this, this is some sort of altar for a real. Oh, really? Think... <laughs> oh, oh, really? really? <laughs> I think you're probably right. Um, what do we, what do we do? Um, well, the simplest answer is to keep walking. Um, what is it? Uh, Flynn, it's a, it's an altar to or a real. There's a big bowl of water. Looks like people put stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Are you going to put something in it? I wasn't planning on it. What would happen? I See, could now that my you goat. said that, I really want to know. How attached are you to that little goat? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, but can I get it back after I put it in the bowl, or is it trapped? Because there's comedic opportunities with this uh, goat. 
So I mean, we could put anything in there. We've got other stuff. Let's uh, put let's put something else. I want uh, I want Buddy to bask in this for quite some time. I do not yeah, want you to give up my I'll let you know, the giant penis. This is the best it ever gets. If you get rid of the scrimshaw goat with a giant penis, the next thing you get will be larger and just worse. So. Right. This is the best tempting. it will ever be. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like flipping, it doesn't like, mean that you won't get the other things as well. God. I'll pull out my backpack, start looking through some things compared to my notes. And I'm like, well, I'll pull out. We have a, a necklace of gold teeth that we found somewhere. I'm going to, can I look I, in the bowl? I know I, sure. I just ran up. Yeah, I'm going to look in the sure. bowl. Yeah. Uh, so again, there's, um, it, it's about three feet in diameter. It's maybe 12 inches deep. There's liquid water in the bottom and a very thin layer of ice on top. And then you can see through the ice on the bottom, there's various coins and kind of some bits and bobs in there. Definitely like shiny metal bits and bobs, but. Oh, you know what? We got this, we got this necklace from, from Maud Chiselbone. Do you remember her? That ice witch? Yeah, the one that. I'm was pretty she sure nice? she was. No, she wasn't. Um, she was. Oh. She was like kidnapping people and cutting them up and eating them in her pot. Maybe we give that away. And, well, and yeah, and then we gave that pot to a town and they fed the entire town with it. With the people that she. No, we watched. No, the it, pot was fine. But the it's pot... still a little weird. Yeah. They don't know what was in the pot before we gave it to them. No. Why would you give that to poor people? Because the pot made food. It was yeah. It was it was magical. So yeah, it was a magic would, pot. The oh. pot would just make infinite food all day. Oh. Not all day, but every day it would create food. So um, what is so, what does the teeth necklace do? Oh, nothing. Creep people just, out. Yeah, it's just a necklace full of gold teeth. I'm but gonna put a silk. I feel like Mod was working for a real anyway. So we can just so give that kinda, back. Yeah, to it's kind of just like giving it back to our reel if we throw that in there. Mm hmm. Okay, so what's the decision? Give her the teeth. This... Yeah, I'm, I'm totally. Wait, okay. I, wait, I really wait, see wait. What hold this, on, what hold happens. on. Do you want to do the whole thing or we just do three of the teeth, one for each of us as we pass through here? I can mean... we just give her all of the teeth so that they're just gone? <laughs> you just want to give her the whole necklace? I'm fine with anything. All right, throw it in there. See what happens. <laughs> All right. This sort of creeps me out a little bit. Who's going to toss? Said, who's going to toss it in? I mean, I'll pull it out of the bag and. I can toss it in. You want to? Yeah, I'll I'll take you... the, the 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 teeth necklace. Just... You notice that there's some uh, some kale in between two of them. Oh God! <laughs> no. I go up to the bowl, just drop it in. <laughs> <laughs> You uh you you drop the 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 necklace of teeth um on top of the ice and it sits there for for just a few seconds and then it almost magically it specifically magically moves through the ice and then settles into the liquid water below <clears throat> the um the wind kind of around you gathers and begins to whip and whoosh and you you can almost swear that you hear a woman's voice on the wind and she says ah, pathetic and then the winds just kind of die down did we all hear that yes okay did Flynn roll me a d20 oh no okay <laughs> Just straight D20. So us, us specifically are pathetic, or was it the offering? 16. Yeah, I guess she doesn't like teeth. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be either. You you don't know what her, her dental proclivities are, so. <laughs> um, Delphina, may, uh, make, a, make a religion oh, check for me. Make a religion check for me. I can do this. I can do this. I have proficiency in this, so come on. That's why I asked you to do it. <laughs> Fuck. Can I use my inspiration? Absolutely. Yay! Easy come, easy go. Burn up that those resources, man. Does this carry over to other games? May I? May well, the, I the D20 does, yeah. May I? Never mind. My, you, this is religion, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Are you, prof- are you proficient okay. in religion? I am. Yeah, I'll I'm allow you to assist. 13. I'll allow you to assist. So you can either have her roll again or you can roll Pike. Uh, I have a plus five. I have a plus six. I think I'm going to take a roll. Yeah. All right. Ooh, natural 19 for another 25. That's nice. So you know that most gods who take, uh, especially gods who are maybe not of the good alignment, who take offerings, want it to be something meaningful or significant. Um, You, as the professor, probably don't necessarily put a whole lot of stock into whether anything happens for good or for bad from it, but you know that they want something that means something to you. Yeah. I, uh... I don't think the, uh... The teeth were a suitable sacrifice. It wasn't quite sacrificial enough, I think. Delfina, roll 1d20. Uh, we. Oh, I want to look into the bowl oh God, oh God, oh God, and, like, oh God, oh God. take a closer look at all of the items at the bottom and okay. see, like, first of all, what kind of items are they? Like, sure. just... Sure, you can coins? you can you can look in there, and there's um there's there's gold, there's silver, there's copper, uh, there's what looks to be a silver hairpin, uh maybe a, a golden brooch or necklace piece. Yeah, I'm specifically looking for anything that could be identifiable for the person. Uh, like a- no, like a silver hairpin, a a golden brooch, and a a a, a ring of uh, teeth on a necklace. Okay. Um, um, I'll f- so while he's doing that, Delfina and Flynn, please roll a perception check. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> breath, deep breath, deep breath. That is a 16. 16. Uh, both of you notice, and Flynn, you specifically recall what this is, but off to the north, maybe... F- 50 odd feet from you, you notice a blue light that is moving, maybe shambling. All right, we got to go. We got to go. Wrap, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Um, we got to keep walking. But we haven't found a suitable sacrifice. Professor. There's a, there's a creepy blue light. When they Remember say that. When they say that, you look up and, and see as well. I don't know that Flynn, either of them, have encountered one of these. Neither of them were with us in episode one. The professor, the professor wasn't. Oh my god! No. Okay, y'all, we gotta we gotta go, and we gotta go now. Uh, okay, but what is it? Do, should it's, we throw it, something in the bowl? I I don't I I take off my uh my my pendant and i throw it in the bowl your what what kind of pendant is it it's a it's a uh it's a crescent moon with the wolf head in it it's oh, like the, the the sign of my uh my guild oh okay it's a guild pendant uh oh okay yeah you throw that in it 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 lands on the ice and then just as the teeth did it kind of magically pushes through the ice into the uh, into the water, and you you look out, and the you can still see that blue light. I but it, I do but this it, all without looking at the bowl. I'm like looking at the light. <clears throat> you you still see the blue light, but it it seems to kind of look the other way, and maybe is shambling, receding away from your current position. Huh. <sighs> Okay. Okay. All right. We still need to go. What was that? That was just a uh, pendant of the sign of the wolf guard. No, 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 no. Not that. Forget your stuff. What was the light? Oh, thanks, Professor. That was a cold white walker. Just for everyone at home, it's specifically a cold light walker. But for the last year, we have called them cold white walkers. And 
or white, or white claw, claw walkers. walkers. White claw walkers, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, you guys! <laughs> oh my I'm god, so guys? cold. Oh. Oh. Did you... was that necklace important? Uh, yeah, yeah. To me, it was. You want it back? No, I, mean, I will. It's still, it's, it's still there. You can see it through the ice. It's sitting in the liquid water. I'll, I can try to get it back for no, you. No, don't you dare. Those things will find you, and they won't stop until they've frozen you and exploded you. I've seen them turn a man to ice and then explode them. Explode? Okay. Expl for touching a bowl? Not for touching a bowl, but they're out here, and I'm pretty sure they do Oriel's bidding, and if that... The first offer wasn't good enough, and we and you were about to become the offering, I guess. Oh. Okay. I mean, we had other gems, Flynn. I Not the. I don't think the gem is important. I think it's what you give up that's important. Oh. I don't. Well, well, do we all need to give something too? We we should be good for now, but we should keep walking. All right. Let's uh, let's keep going then. So I'm not giving up my goat. Mad. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, all right. Uh, you, uh, you guys quietly make your way uh, off of the uh, off of the the dais and get back on the road and uh, and head on down. You walk for. Uh, you walk for about another hour, and and you can sort of see it is. Again, it's always dark in Icewind Dale, but it's it's getting toward the end of what your body would think of as near the end of the day, and you can see the a little bit of a silhouette of of a town up ahead. Um, you see some fires glowing inside, <clears throat> and um, and so you know that you're you're close to something. You uh, you you keep walking, and not too much longer, you see a a city. Um, you see a, a wall of of wood uh, that surrounds a city, maybe 25 feet uh, high-ish. Uh, it's reminiscent of uh, Bryn Chander, actually, um, Flynn. Hmm. Uh, well, and Flynn and the professor, which is surrounded by, uh, wow. by a wall. Um, the, um, you can see that the wall, you're coming from the western approach, you can see the wall extends out into the lake, uh, creating a bit of a safe harbor uh, for the town's boats. Uh, you can see guards walking along the top of the wall, keeping lookout for trouble from orcs or wildlife or possibly from adventuring parties. Um, there's a large gate set in the south of the wall. You can see on the map there where the, the road's not really marked Going from Bremen because no one gives a shit about Bremen, but you can see where it says toward Brinchander. But that's the the southern gate, and um, it is it's well guarded. Uh, but you can see a few folks that are that are you know coming and, and going from the city. Uh, the snow has picked up a little bit. It's it's kind of moderate. Uh, and since you're close to the lake, the wind has picked up off the lake a bit. It's you know never comfortable in Icewind Dale when you're outside, but it's it's less comfortable than normal. Krufiel, why don't you uh, make yourself scarce until we uh, are settled in the city? Mm, as you wish. So, are, do you want him to fly off, or are you popping no, him out just, of... No, okay. just pop him out. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so do you guys want to approach the gate? Yeah. Yeah. Knock, knock, knock. Well, no, it's, it's there. There's it, Again, there, there's a guard presence, and there's there's kind of one guy who seems to be talking to everyone as, Jeez, as they come buddy, in. Yes, and we're knocking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walked right past yes. the two guards. Yeah. Knock on uh, the middle gate. Uh, hello, you there. What the fuck are you knocking for? The door. Uh, Isn't okay. that how we get in? Welcome to Targos. What's your business here, please? Um, We're looking for a couple travelers who may have some bounties. Looking for travelers, huh? And he kind of looks around. There's a few other people. Looks like you found some. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, make sure you stay out of trouble or you'll probably regret it. If you just want stew, you better hurry. They're probably close to out by now. 
Market Square. He looks behind you. Welcome to Targos. What's your business here, please? Mm. Are there any, like, weird rules or anything we should watch out for? He's he's addressing them, and he stops, and he looks, returns real slow to look at you. Yeah. I mean, at East Haven, they tried to pick your pockets all the time. Is there anything weird like that around here? Uh, yeah. Stay out of trouble, or you'll probably regret it. Thanks. And then that he's wasn't back. very helpful. He's you don't back. have no. to thank him. He, he's back <laughs> on to the, uh, the people that were behind you. Uh... Well, apparently there's food in the square if anyone's hungry. Probably should get something to eat after walking all day. Um, yeah, I'm freezing. Walking uh, so. all day for the last three and a half hours. <laughs> hey. I mean, it was all day. I know, all it's day. Flynn. It's Flynn, though. It is Flynn. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So you guys, you, you head through the gates into the city? Yeah. It, uh, it, this... It's actually fairly well lit inside. There's a. Hold on, I gotta turn this art, desktop audio down in my headphones. Um, it's actually pretty clean inside. It's well lit. Uh, you see people kind of hastily moving further into the city, and you hear a little bit of a commotion, kind of northish of you. Uh, and you, as someone passes by, they uh. Let's say, let's say, oh, come on, let's wait, wait, we got to go to the market square is where they're, where they're, they're feeding people. And, um, oops, wrong layer. Can we, can we just like casually follow those people? Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that kind of seems to be where, um, where the commotion that you hear is and where, like, if you look down, you see people kind of moving across. Mm -hmm. Um, so you guys move into market square. There's tables and open stalls where people might normally sell their wares, but the few of them that you see that remain there seem to be packing up to get out of the weather. The um, the wind is not as bad in here, but the, the snow is is still coming down, uh, still coming down pretty well. Uh, in the center of Market Square, you see the source of the commotion. There's a, a small raised stage um, surrounded by guards, and... Um, there's a somewhat rotund human and a uh, also somewhat rotund halfling who are uh, selling bowls of soup. Um, Flynn and the professor, please give me a perception check. It's not great. Mm -hmm. 12. 22. Not 20. Nice. On a natural 20, Flynn, you look and right standing between those two guys, you see it. The it pot? looks exactly like the cauldron of plenty that you guys found in the ice caves and took to East Haven for them to feed their citizens with. Hey, we just were talking about that. You were, and that is just the greatest bit of of uh, serendipity that I've had on the stream <laughs> yet. <laughs> um, as you as you move a little closer, you you see some signs uh, up, and you see that they're selling that soup for five gold per bowl. Selling it, okay. Um, yes. yes, I. And if, if any of you care to look in the journal or or remember the uh, how it uh, how it works, the it will make three hundred and sixty servings per day. Yes. Which yeah. Is Eighteen hundred gold pieces, and folks are there like snapping it up, slamming slamming down their gold, and the 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 big human is is taking the money and oh two more bowls here, and the halfling is like waist deep, like scooping out bowls full of stuff. You wonder why it's not the other way around, but you know. Um, if we can get close enough, I'd want to strike up a conversation with them. Uh, you can get to within like five or six feet of the stage. There, there's a, a line queued to get soup, but you could probably get up just with some guards in your face. 
uh, be like, "Hey, where'd y'all get this 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 uh this air cauldron from?" Oh yes, the speaker. Ooh, is that an opposed role for me? Um, I think if I just doing it for his surface level thoughts, mm -hmm. it is not. It's not. So you just get the surface level thoughts. Yeah, I'm yeah. bringing up. I'm bringing up the uh, the cauldron and I'm using to tech thoughts. Okay. As, his, so, as uh, soon as I know that his mind is on it. His surface thoughts are. You get back in line, you little shit. Who, whose business is it of how this got here? The speaker provides and we make money. All I need to know. That's kind of his surface thoughts. But out loud, the other two of you here. Oh, the speaker. He provides wonderfully for us. It's, it's all hail the speaker of Targos, and you hear the crowd like, "Yay!" That's that's real real nice. You know, I heard uh, East Haven has a pot like that too. Well, it's all really well. The next time we're in East Haven, we will eat. Maybe not quite as well as here because this is Targos. And again, you—he's definitely pandering, but the crowd is not wanting to piss anybody off, and so they are—they're going for it. Who is speaker here? Well, We'd you like don't to, know like, who the speaker is here. We'd like to give him our, our thanks personally. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll have to get in line for that. Uh, speaker Maxel Denar has lots of business appointments. Does he charge five gold for those for that pleasure as well? <laughs> How long does your detect thoughts last, Flynn? Um, let's see. It's a, is it a whole minute? Yeah, a whole minute. When the professor says that, does he charge five gold for a meeting as well? Um, you you definitely hear the, the surface thought of, you insolent little shit, I will have you killed. And professor, he just kind of muddles through the answer and isn't really committal on whether it costs five gold or not. Enjoy your uh, your soup and your hard uh, your hard earned money. <laughs> yes, you have to pour the water in and then stir for a whole minute. It's it's pretty tough work. And the halfling looks up to him. What the hell do you know about that? I have to stir the damn thing. So they're not even pretending that they've made this soup. No. Hmm. No, the, you could you could if you listened kind of to the crowd around a little bit who some of them are a little bit miffed that you guys kind of cut line, but you're not really in line. So they don't really know what y'all are doing. But it, it seems as though they they come out uh, and it's either three different times per day or sometimes they'll just come out at this time and do like all three charges yeah. of the pot. Um So you guys have been standing there a little bit. The the guards yeah. who you're kind of right in the face of. So are you going to get in line to eat? Or oh, what? no, our, our business Suddenly is done here. I don't have an appetite any longer. As you were a soldier. You uh, walk off. <laughs> when you say that, he bows, but then also kind of like goes back into at ease, not really knowing what to do. Um, you uh, You hear a voice... You hear a voice behind you, and again, it's from earlier in your tenure. Flynn and Professor roll a perception check to recognize who it is. You hear a voice behind you say, Oh, I bought some extra bowls of stew that you can have. Uh, <coughs> perception, you said? Mm-hmm. Oh, 22. Is, it's another Flynn natty 20 on that. Flynn is. <laughs> Flynn is pulling you all up. What did you get, Professor? It's just a 10. Um... Flynn, you recognize that as the voice. See, I had my window ready here and I wasn't on the right layer to pop it up. You recognize that as the voice of Captain Imdra. Huh. From East Haven. And she's like, yes, I, I, I have I have extra bowls over here uh, that, 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 that I bought too much. You, you're welcome to them. And she Thank and, you. and she and she gives you. Just the slightest of head nods you pick up with your 2022 20, perception. We 
We'll be happy to join you. She um, she takes you. Flynn, isn't that? Yep. Yep. It's a... Yep. Yes, it is, Professor. Shut up. Let's go. What, what are you doing in all this, Delfina? <laughs> I'm just sort of completely confused. We even know her. <laughs> We met yeah. her in, uh... They know so many people, <laughs> and yeah. some of them are even friendly. And I'm passing out. I, if I see anybody nearby, um, especially women or children that look like they have no money, I'm like sneaking some of my gold to them so that they can go get the soup. Okay, uh, roll 1d4. 1d4. Where is it? Stop hiding. It's the triangular one on your desk. So you see, you see three, um, three women uh, with who, who seem down on their luck, and and they, uh, of the three women, there are two children with them. So, uh, if you'd like to deduct twenty five gold, I have fifteen. Uh, then you may you may give that out. Uh, just update your character sheet. You can pick three. You can pick three people of the five who eat. Guys, oh, on the slide, you doing this, Delphi? Can I have? Can I have ten gold? I'll pay you back. I don't know when or how, but I will. Just ten. Ten, ten gold. I. Yes, please. It's really important. Yes, Delphi here. I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll. I'll, we'll. We've got ten gold in the party. Party treasure. We can use that. Thank you. Yeah, I'll remember that the, 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 there is there is slush money in the party fund. Uh, yes, they they are all very very happy, and, and the children look at you. Just you haven't seen someone here look at you as though. I mean, you're celestial, and you know that you have kind of an angelic beauty about you that you don't think much of. But it, it's been a long time since someone has looked at you like these two children looked at you. Um, it, it's almost enough to bring Flynn to tears. <clears throat> the professor, not so much, but, but Flynn yeah. almost, I mean, like, he's like, goddamn snow sand in my eye. <laughs> um, it, it's, it really is a nice, a nice moment. And, um, Imdra is, is still walking away, um, and kind of looks behind and Flynn, she yeah. looks at you like. Come in, hold on. Gotta... Yeah. <laughs> as, we, as we walk, I want to kind of fill in. Uh, I've forgotten your name. Delfina. Delfina. Yep, that's Ouch. the one. <laughs> as we walk away, I'll be like, Del- stay warm. Yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, let me tell you everything that happened, woman that I can't remember. <laughs> uh, this was, so in East Haven, she was a... Uh, captain of the guard over there and we did a few like jobs for her there was like a whole Durgar attack on the about this point you reach her and and she says say nothing everything here has ears follow me all right i'll just switch to like (laughs) telepathy (laughs) telepathy yeah all right please continue then telepathically yeah. So, um, so yeah. So we defeated Maud Chilzabone. She was a like a hag, and that's where we got the cauldron. And in payment, Captain Indra is the one that that sent us out there. She gave us a scroll of fireball, which I don't know what ever happened to that. Do we still have that? It, 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 it would have, it would have been in Xander stuff. So it, even though it wasn't in my inventory, uh, add it to the inventory of stuff in Xander's pouch in his backpack. Okay. Uh, also that's where the gray bag of tricks came from that we haven't really done anything with. I can always hold on to that for you if you would like. Yeah. The bag of tricks. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can hold on to that. It's also on the like party inventory screen. Party inventory screen. Um. After that, like the town was attacked by Durgar. The the cold hearted killer showed up at one point and attempted to murder the like sitting sitting in speaker. Um, 
a lot of stuff happened in East Haven. We were there for a long time. Wow. So also looking through my notes, I seem to remember that the because you said Goodmead was having trouble with a giant, right? Yes. Earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, I remember that the speaker of Goodmead is one of the speakers that is now either dead or missing because the speaker of Gidmead was killed by a giant. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I did hear that he was dead. Yeah. So. I forgot to tell everybody. Yeah. Um. Are you are you complete with with the catching her up? Yeah, pretty much. So Imdra at a very kind of quick clip winds you guys in and out of a number of different alleys and stuff. And, um, she brings oh, you, man, we have some cool stuff that, I, that we, that the bottom of my backpack, the more, the further I dig down, <laughs> we've got some cool stuff. There's always cool stuff in the bottom. There's also always candy that has like liquefied and turned something into a big mass. I've got a satchel made of dark, dark mantle hide. Why are what we not mean? using the bag of tricks? Uh, I mean, we just haven't found a use for it yet. And is there not a use for it? Look at this shit. <laughs> She's like, think about all the pets She's I can have for an hour. All this stuff from this bag. Yeah. All the pets. <laughs> Three I charges have. a day. You know what? I think one of those has a goat in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she she winds you through a number of different alleys uh, briskly, keeping her head low. And she brings you up here. Um I'm going to ping the spot and then I'll turn its label on. Yeah, uh, we got all this stuff like right before Herrick went missing. And I think we just kind of. I mean, when Herrick went missing and forgot, yeah, everything went into overdrive. So, yeah. So, um, so put that on the map layer to go back through my backpack. She brings you to a place called the Wolf's Pelt Inn. Cool. This is a. A pretty simple uh, inn. It it faces the lake. Um, you know, most likely when before everything was completely frozen over, it would be some nice some nice views of the lake. Um, it's a pretty old establishment, but she uh, she she brings you guys in close, kind of right right at the door before she opens the door, and she says, "The Winters family is sympathetic to our needs." and has no love for the criminal element taking over the town. I'm going to see if anyone is following us. I'll be right back. And with that, she heads off in a different direction into the night. You would assume to circumvent around to see if you have been followed. Uh, so she said the, the Winters family is sympathetic to our needs. And has no love for the criminal element that is taking over the town. She's intense. Yeah, yeah, she is. You'll yeah. You uh, get used to it. Yeah, maybe. Here, let me uh, do pop that up for you. She's rocking a fucking eye patch. I mean, she's. I mean, she she's, was pretty she cool. Met us. Yes, she, she was pretty cool. She and Xander did not get along. He does no, not like she was one of the magic people that, that hadn't tried to screw us over yet. But now seeing her here with the cauldron here is not sitting well at all. Well, hopefully we get some answers. Uh, my money's on more corrupted speakers because. Yeah. So are you guys going to go in or are you going to make a break for somewhere else on your own? I'll uh, go, I in. go in. Because I want to hear what she's got to say. Yeah, she's got some splaining to do. Uh, yep. So you guys head inside. Uh, it's a, it's a nice, uh, nice establishment. It it definitely seems as though it has been, been here for a while. Um, it's it is not very busy. Uh oh, sorry. I'm trying to align the stream map. Uh, it is not very busy, and there's a a man behind the bar who sees you come in. Ah, hello, please come inside. It's it's cold out there. It's Icewind Dale, for God's sakes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. 
um, um, there you have your choice of tables to sit at. Um, something in the corners. So I can put my back against the wall. Okay. Yeah, you can absolutely find a spot. I mean, again, when I say it's not very busy, there are three, maybe four other people in here. Uh, there's a couple at the bar, and then there's a couple of tables that are just singularly taken. Um, but uh, yeah, you can find a spot, and uh, you you actually see the, the man that was behind the bar and a woman um, both walk over to uh to take your orders uh uh yes, hello. we are new in town are, are you the proprietors absolutely i'm i'm theobald and this is my wife josie and we've got our five daughters running around here serving drinks and cooking food and stuff i'm sure you'll see them uh what uh what brings you to to targos um <laughs> are y'all cool well, well, like, well, well, like, like, how do you, how do you mean? Like, and, jo- I, and, jo- and Josie just kind of like looks <laughs> in and rolls and rolls her eyes. Like, let's let's start with, what can I get you to drink and maybe something to eat as well? Uh, lavender tea, please. Lavender. I, I'll take a look. Oh, and oh, oh, butter and bread, so that we can have <laughs> bread tacos. I still fail to see what you find uh, appealing about yes. the Yes, butter, butter and bread, lavender tea, um, and for the, any, the gentleman. Any sort of dark liquor that you have, mm. whatever bread bread you may have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, professor, what do you want? <laughs> Just wine, if you've got it. Absolutely, nothing to eat for you? Do I, have I eaten today? <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 because you had I, it. You were too busy. I don't know. He, no, he, he hasn't. Has some um, kind of food, yes. I'll just I'll bring a sampling of it. Yeah, things. yeah, uh, yeah. If you and, and you see she <laughs> she looks she looks at Theobald as she turns away and she, she kind of she rolls her eyes, but it's in a it's a good natured like Wow, we were looking for some business. <laughs> and she and she heads she heads towards the back. Uh, so you were, uh, you were asking if I was cool. Uh, I, I'm sure my daughters don't think I'm cool, but, uh, but, but I think I'm I mean, cool. I mean, you're not going to rat us out to the, to the, to the guard or the speaker or anything, right? <laughs> I mean, he would have no reason to. Uh, we are fine, upstanding citizens. Well, uh, I mean, we haven't done anything. Uh, that's really more where I am, is you haven't done anything yet. I, I don't, I don't know anything at all about your standing. Oh, we've gotten blamed much more for doing less. <laughs> we have? I mean, it's fair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Delphi, I'm going to apologize. You picked the wrong crew to run with. <laughs> it's definitely definitely a rough crew. Uh, coming to the table is... Uh... I mean, since she's joined, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've only started... We've only taken over a cult she's she's showed up coming to the table is a uh is a a young woman she looks to be in her early 20s and she has uh a a plate of bread and butter and like some some small plates of just different kind of things to nosh on and uh they both says ah this is my oldest daughter terrace uh terrace meet meet the the people who think that i am cool (laughs) <laughs> and, she's, and, she, and she has a she has a super big smirk on her face, and she looks at him, and she looks at all of you. She, right, right, Dad. Uh, and well, she. My name's she's, Delfina, and hello, he hello, is cool. Delfina. <laughs> hello, Delfina. Uh, she sets down the the bread and uh, and and the butter, and uh, uh, one of us will be along in a minute with with your drinks. And then she heads back towards the kitchen. Thank you very much. I begin the process of making the bread and butter. <laughs> Let's butter this time. Got to watch my girlish figure. Uh, ah, yes. So you're you're just in town to sample all of the great things that Targos has: the clean streets and brightly lit torch fires. Yeah, we've we've met. 
the soup salesman. Mm-hmm. So that was a great start to things. Looked like it was just water, so I'm sure yours is a lot better. Well, no, it, it was fantastic. I mean, honestly, it the cauldron does make some fantastic soup. Ah, you've sampled the cauldron, have you? Uh, not not here. Not here. We knew it. Who else has a cauldron? Man, that's a weird story, isn't it? Let's maybe it's better if you just don't know. Yeah. But yeah. didn't you say there was one in East nope, I No, 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 uh, no, that was not, uh, you heard. He heard. He, when, when you start trying to shut her up, he like kicks a chair over. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I I wasn't listening to what you said because this chair fell over. Um, Let me go and uh, and check on, uh, check on your drinks. Uh, and then he will, he will leave you. You are, you are effectively where no one can, can hear you at this moment. Okay. I'm going to telepathy just in case um say so, yes so captain indra was in charge of the cauldron when we left it in east haven we gave it to the town as a gift but now captain indra is here and the cauldron is here and a, a few select individuals in the town seem to be making a fortune off of what this thing is providing so um well, they stole your gift. Yes, we have questions. Yeah. And Imdra seemed to be quite straightforward. She was a bit of a straight shooter. And so if she is behind us, that's a... I mean, I'm more sad than anything at this point. <laughs> because that's just one less person that I thought we could trust and we can't. Well, you, hopefully uh, someone double-crossed her. And now we got to fix it. You hear the uh, you hear the door open and you see Imdra walking in. She she spies you. She looks over to Theobald and makes the the standard kind of drink thing. And he nods and she comes over and may I join you? Oh yes, yeah, yes, yes. Well, you invited us here. I do not believe that we were followed. Um, the day after you left East Haven, Prudence handed over the speakership to someone named Bartholomew Vieira. He was sent to East Haven by the speaker of Targos with a, a ream of parchment of leadership credentials. Prudence transferred control to him, though I don't know that there's been a vote in the town. I don't know what the Speaker's Council knows or doesn't know. Prudence and another woman took the cauldron from East Haven to here. I left I... my guards. I'm sorry, are you interjecting? No, I just, I knew Prudence was I knew she was bad. She was like just she she managed to just survive every attack that was there and she was way too convenient. You and Xander both. Um, I left my guards in charge for all that they may be. I, I don't know what's happened there. And uh and began to follow Prudence and Kriya. So um Everybody make a perception check on when she says that. Seventeen. Twelve. Twelve. Two. <laughs> uh, Delphina and the professor, you definitely notice the 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 dis Wait. <laughs> the distaste, the displeasure, the the anger she puts when she says the name Kriya. Um, Flynn, you're, you are preoccupied I, with, n- with something else. But um, I didn't have a question. <laughs> I, uh, 
uh, she, she, I left my guards in charge and began to follow Prudence and Kriya. I thought that Prudence, it, you know, that doesn't matter. Uh, they skirted north of Bryn Shander directly to Targos. It, it almost looks like they're cutting in a new segment of road so that no one ever goes to Bryn Shander. I, it, once I got in town, I saw Prudence and Kriya deliver the cauldron to the speaker. It was taken into the Luskin Arms Inn, where, where the speaker lives. <sighs> Prudence almost spotted me, and so I had to spend some time laying low. I found this place. I got to know the Winters and, and their children, and we've talked about the menace of the Zentarum that is taking over this town. And I was on the roof with my spyglass, just kind of looking out, and I saw a boat come in. You have a spyglass? Damn it. But yeah, I've only got one eye. <laughs> I need to get me one of those. I saw Prudence and Kriya coming back into town via boat, and they had two prisoners with them. I don't cool. know who they have. But or I mentioned a Prue. Uh, yes, yeah, so some folks would some would call her Prue as a as a nickname. Generally, only in certain, like, not important. Um, <clears throat> I think that they're being held in the Luskin Arms, but uh, I don't I don't know who it is or 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 why they're there or anything. Where is the uh, the Luskin Arms? Uh, she will tell you that it is, it's in town. Uh, it's kind of, so you guys came from the gate north to the harbor. It is north, but much more east. Um, I could actually put the map back up and show you if you like, but we're, we're coming to a, to a, a, a point here. The, um, th uh, Theo Prince and Kriya, was Kriya, it? K R E A. Yeah. Okay. Um, Theo comes over and, and sets the drinks down. He sees that you're all talking intently, so he sets them down and immediately kind of about faces and and walks away. I'm assuming we can trust the bartender and his family? <sighs> well, <clears throat> they haven't turned me in the last few days, so I... Can um... we trust you? I... I, I hope so. As much as I trusted you to try to save uh, our town when... I'm going to detect thoughts this time. <laughs> for sure. For sure. You you do detect thoughts and her thoughts are not at all about you or about screwing you, but just a wave of betrayal for Prudence, from Prudence. Um, and then underlying a wave of hatred for Kriya. <clears throat> that is, that is distinctly and definitely as you're discussing this, what she is thinking about is being betrayed by Prudence and how much she fucking hates that bitch Kriya. So who is, who is this Kriya? <sighs> I don't know. Someone apparently with ties to here, I guess from... Prudence has passed to, uh, let's just say they have a very gregarious relationship. Uh, is she being upfront with us or does she know this Kriya better than she's? Uh, I mean, insider. You could have your, your dead ringer with her passive insight, but. Uh, I mean, my passive insight is 10. I rolled a natural one. Yeah. But I'm, I'm hoping my detect thoughts might. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, your detect thoughts <laughs> is, it is definitely, well, you rolled a one. Uh, Delfina, <laughs> yeah, Del, no, it's not great. Delfina, though, has a passive of 17. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, were she to interject, I would give her some information. But, um, but yes, yeah, so again, the, the, the detect thoughts, that's for sure what you're getting, is that she is, she's grievously wounded 
by what she considers an ultimate betrayal by prudence, not, not only for her personally, but against the town. And so backing up to your original question of, can I trust you? She says, I guess as, as much as I trusted you to, to do right by East Haven, which you did at every single turn, um, strained as the relationship got at the end from our constant use of you, um, you still did everything right by us. And, and, and for a moment in that, she does think about kind of the pride that she had found some people, people being you, to, um, to, to do something good for the city, for East Haven. So the thoughts you get from her are, are kind of genuine thoughts. Yeah. So I, I guess we can't trust her then. For now. She, uh, she knocks her, her whole drink back. <sighs> weren't there, weren't there more of you when I, when I last saw you? Well, one, one's in a portal. So we, so we got, we traded him. We got, so we traded for her, um, oh, for, yeah. for, for, for legal reasons. I will not go into other details because while you're cool, you're still a little bit of a stick, a stick in the mud. So let's just say, um, uh, the, the one who won the poetry contest has come into some new responsibilities. Um, and we okay. have reason to believe that uh, our other two friends, the ones you weren't pretty fond of, are have been taken by prudence and are being held here. We Professor, believe. Professor, we're going to say that that is right at the end of your one minute on the thoughts. And yeah. as soon as Flynn says, she obviously can see that Xander and and Ferio and Herrick and Zalvana are all missing. Zalvana was the poetry winner. But, so she thinks of the three of them. And when he says, we think that prudence has them, just a hot, hot flash of angry rage, like you've not felt from someone in a very long time, uh, directed at prudence. When when Flynn says that, she holds it. Her composure is is absolute, but her mind is just throw in the hate. So. So yes, that is that is why we've come. Um, we believe, well, now we know that it was prudence, but we believe that the people that she has captured are indeed our, our companions. And we want <sighs> them. Back. Well, I, I'm going to get a drink um, uh, and we'll talk more about this. What are you drinking? Uh, just the, the basic the basic ale that they have here. It's it's not great, but it's not cobalt piss. <laughs> I will go get another round for everybody. That, no, I can on, go. That's all right. Put on our, t put on our tab. Yeah. <laughs> Who just knocked their mic over? Probably me. I tapped my, yeah, my, my desk. <laughs> gotcha. It's, it's, it's the Midwest habit of like slapping your legs when you get up to get to the table, but it, my desk was in the way. <laughs> yeah. So, so Flynn, Flynn gets up and, and walks up to the bar and is the last thing of the evening. Professor and Delfina, please both give me a perception check. Why always perception? I notice nothing. <laughs> Two. Sixteen. <laughs> Delphina, you, uh, sorry, I just like shuttered all my windows here. Uh, <laughs> of course. Of course I did. You, uh, you notice what? Flynn at the bar talking to Terrace and, uh, seemingly ordering a drink. And then she turns around and walks away and he slips behind the bar and walks away as well. And that... It's where we're going to end our stream for this week. Wait, wait uh, just disappeared? Well, I don't I, know. I just saw you nothing. don't know. You saw nothing. <laughs> watch the VOD. It'll be up on Thursday. Uh, or you can watch it on Twitch right after this. Did he just did he just walk away or did he actually like disappear? Oh, no. He, he followed her. Okay, okay, okay. 